Oh! Yeah! Hey, how are you? How's everybody doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. I hope you're well. I hope you're doing good. I hope that uh, everything's great. We're not late. You are. No, yeah, we're always on time. Every, yes. Uh, we, we, All we, the this, time. This is on Wolf Den time. Yeah. And in Wolf Den time, we're always on time. It's you guys. It doesn't adhere to your mere mortal ideals of time. Yeah, I mean, you guys were early. What were you doing over here? Stop waiting for yeah. us. Uh, welcome, everybody. We have a lot to talk about today on yes. this podcast. Like, for example, we have to talk about the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pass finally got a price, and it's very expensive. Yeah. We're going to talk about a lot of expensive things today. Yes. Uh, so that might upset some of you but I'm sorry. Uh, Analog Pocket, we're going to talk about that, that that they just dropped the OS that's going to be for it, and it's a big deal. Uh, I want to talk about the new MacBooks. Uh, also, uh, Dbrand is in the news. Yeah, they, they, They're being the real news. weird. They're weird or just, like, defiant. Yes. <laughs> they are being... I'll, I'll say... I'll, I'll split the difference. They're being weirdly defiant. Yes. Uh, and we got a bunch of other things to talk about. But first, yeah. we have other things to talk about. Like, for example, we have a Guzzy Girl. All right. Cool name. <laughs> Thank you for the seven months. Thrill House, thanks for the hundo bits. Helping to get that net worth up to two mil. Thanks, Thrill House. I appreciate <laughs> it. If you don't know, I put a video up on the Wolf Den Clips channel today about me looking up my net worth, which was very, very accurate. I actually watched that and I almost commented, so you can afford to get me a laptop. <laughs> no, 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 listen, that was my net worth. The Wolfden <laughs> Podcast's net worth is different, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, AU Retriever, thank you for the five months. What's up, Wood? All right, you're banned now. I'm not reading the rest of that. Man, Manilo, thank you for the Prime subscription. I appreciate it. Um, anyway, we made a poll last week i didn't know that was by, a, by was possible you'd i yes uh, yes so uh if you listen to this podcast via spotify um you might have noticed that last week's episode had a poll up because we were talking about metroid dread so far game of the year uh you heard it here first uh, uh so i set up a little poll there and i asked you uh what was your first metroid game because i know a lot of people had kept asking us if I never played a Metroid game before, should I? Is it okay to just play Dread? And we said yes, but we asked, and according to the poll, only fifty-eight votes. But it's a first first time going. Twenty-eight uh, percent of you said that Super Metroid was your first Metroid game, which I found to be very interesting because that's like the Super Nintendo era, and I know like our audience generally skews younger. So I'm surprised that a lot of people said Super Metroid was their first Metroid game. Yes. Uh, I, that, I, that was, I mean, that was a very popular Metroid game. Oh, yeah. No, no doubt. It's one of the best games, period. I mean, it just took me, you know, a little bit by surprise. Uh, second second choice uh, with 24% was Metroid, like the guy from Smash Brothers. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see that. that was an actual yeah. that was an actual submission. You they could only okay. let you have like what is what is it like seven? Yeah, seven options. So I knew I wanted the last one to be a joke option, so that was a joke option, and you took it. <laughs> you took it. Uh, and third was Metroid Prime with sixteen percent. Okay, so what was yeah. my first? No, my first one was the original. Yeah, yours was mine. Was my first was Metroid Prime. Right. Yeah. Uh, so my first was the original, and then my, I don't know, maybe it was Prime after that. Maybe I didn't play anything all, all the way until Prime. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So uh, very interesting choice of, uh, here. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people play Dread for the, the, as their first one, and you know what? I don't blame yeah. them. Uh, I think, yeah. again, we were trying to drive home the point last week that Dread is perfectly fine to play if you've never played any of the other games before. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it like it fills you in with all the context you need to get going and then it mm. just goes from there. You don't yes. really need to know like what happens in all the other games to understand this. Correct. 
uh, yeah, I don't know why people are worried about that. I, I guess maybe they think that the, the the story is like really important, but it's it's very much because not. I, I think it's because like now all modern games have like deep involved stories, and Metroid is the type of game it's been around for years, and I guess just through osmosis, people have learned of the story of the Metroids and stuff. But that's like I know a lot about you know Master Chief's armor. I've only ever played one Halo game to completion. Because right. it's just a lot of things that are out there. But Me Halo is another game like Metroid where the story doesn't really matter. And if you comment right now saying otherwise, you will be banned because you know I'm right. <laughs> well, are you on Wi-Fi? No. You're, you're, I think you got to leave the Discord and come back. Uh, and while like you do that, I will say uh, Silent Mongoose. Thank you for the four months. Uh, Smash Brothers was my first Metroid game. Okay, well, you know what? That is a good point. Uh, Sora came out last night. I haven't touched Smash Brothers, so I have no comment on Sora. So don't ask me about Sora. I haven't touched Sora yet. Um, uh, was, well, uh, you, you're exactly the same. Uh, I'm about to get banned, but for Halo, it varies by game, says the Cyberquake. Fair. Uh, let's talk about the first topic today, Nintendo Switch Online's expansion pack gets a price. If you don't know what that is, they announced a few weeks ago Nintendo Switch Online is getting N64 and Sega Genesis games. Yes, oh my god, wow. Not only that, but uh, you will have access to the Animal Crossing New Horizons Happy Home Paradise uh, DLC. So that was announced last week. Yes. Um, yeah, they, they just decided a DLC is going to be roped into the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack. Yes. Uh, they announced the launch date for the expansion pack and the price. So the launch date is October 25th. So soon. Very, very soon. <laughs> I, I broke your the camera for a second. I think I fixed it. Okay. Oh, good. I'm back. Uh, so yeah, October, October 25th it launches, but the price is what ev got everyone all in a tizzy. Nintendo has announced... have to make a video early next week. <laughs> Nintendo has announced that the Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack membership, which will give Switch owners access to N64 and Sega Genesis games alongside Animal Crossing, uh, New Horizons Happy Home Paradise DLC, will cost $49.99 a year, a $30 increase from the standard membership. If you have other Switch owners in your family, a family membership, which can, can support up to eight Nintendo accounts, um, will cost $79.99 for 12 months. For comparison, Nintendo currently offers Switch Online membership for $3.99 for one month, $7.99 for three months, or $19.99 for a year. A family membership costs $34.99 for the year. Yeah, so, so, so we, that, we have a family know, membership, and we're probably going to continue using a family membership, and uh, yeah. that's a lot of money. That, that goes, that, yeah. what was it before, $40 for family membership? It was $35 for 30, family membership. $35, and now, yeah. Now it's up to 80 Now that's a lot of money. Yeah. We disconnected really quick, but we'll be back in two seconds. Okay. It, it's my my shit is all messed up right now. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's a oh. lot. That that's a yeah. hefty price increase. So it's it's more than double. Yeah, uh, it, it it's it's more than double, and all we're like okay. It's kind of a big deal we're getting N64 games. It's kind of a big yeah. deal we're getting Sega Genesis games. Nobody is playing these Sega Genesis games. Nobody's playing these Sega Genesis games as much as they were playing NES and SNES games. And especially because definitely no one's playing games, it for N64. Especially because these Sega Genesis games, with the exception of two, were already available on the Switch in another package. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean... <sighs> It is a big deal that we're getting in 64 games. Uh, yeah. We're getting 10 of them? Yes. Was it 9? Was it 9 I or 10? I think it's 10. 
it's like an odd number, isn't it? Because Winback was like, well, one of them was like hanging off the edge. Yeah. It, it, it might be nine. But anyway, nine or ten. And yeah. uh, uh, they're big deal games. So, so like, I under, games. like, they're worth the money. But the problem is that it's such a big jump from the $20 yeah. a year people were paying all the way up yeah. to now 50. 50. Well, but, but again, it's optional. You don't have to pay for this. Right. Uh, you, you, you just you don't need the N64 or Genesis games. But the thing that's weird is that you do need it to get the Animal Crossing DLC. You can buy the Animal Crossing DLC without this. Oh, I did not know that. They're throwing it in as like a bonus. So how, how much? Uh, on its own? Yes. Uh, 25 bucks. Is that a is that a one time thing? Twenty five yeah. bucks one time. Okay, never mind. One time. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate it that much. I think that's a pretty cool, cool <laughs> option. Then, so, so I'm assuming that this expansion will have a lot of uh, Nintendo first party DLC just roped into it. That's what I'm thinking. Like, if they start adding more Nintendo first party DLC to this expansion pack, um, and they increase the amount of game added to N64 and Genesis, then it might justify the price. As of right now, it's really hard to justify that price. Right. Um, a lot of people are saying they're hoping that we're going to get a lot more N64 games. And they've shown us a bunch that we're going to get. We're going to get Majora's Mask and we're going to get F-Zero and stuff like that in the future. We're going to get Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, those are big deal games. All, all these N64 games yeah. are big deal games. But if there's ones that you're hoping for, or maybe you're hoping that this expansion pass is going to get better, do not buy it now because you should never buy something, especially a subscription service. You should never buy something yeah. that in the hopes that it will get better because it could just never get better. <laughs> I have faith that it will get better, but don't, don't, uh, I mean, don't buy into it. If, if you're hoping uh, it will get better. We saw the games that they're going to add, but by the same token, look at how they've handled NES and SNES games so far on the Switch. We have a handful of like the classic Nintendo first party games, and then you got like that weird firefighter game for the Super Nintendo. You have all these weird uh Jalico games for the NES that nobody remembers playing. Right. You know, it's a very spotty track record, and it you know, it's reasonable to believe that that could continue. With the N64 games. I mean, the N64 has a very small library as it is, but they'll probably, at this rate, you know, fill it up with a lot of other weird stuff. Like, like we're getting win back already. That's weird as it is, even though that is a cult classic. Um, but we might get other random weird shit like Hybrid Heaven or uh, one of the Clay Fighters or whatever. So, a, a, a lot of people are saying, one of the arguments is that... Um... With the family pass, it's less than a dollar a month per person. Because you can have eight people on the family pass, and that is yeah. phenomenal. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. And we like yeah. that. But um it's it nobody's doing that. <laughs> nobody's getting yeah. eight people and having them all split the difference. Um yeah. and and I don't think that's a very good uh, I, I I don't think that's a good that's a great argument. Uh as, even if you have the regular uh year of nintendo switch online just for one person it's still a lot more money for people yeah like it's it's a significant yeah amount more like i said it's more than double what you're currently paying yeah so i don't uh, uh it, it's 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 still it's still a lot I, I also see a lot of people are saying that uh this is an outrage especially because uh they haven't fixed their online services like it's still um yeah online for a lot of their first party games are still pretty much garbage uh mm -hmm. i don't like that argument either because it's not the subscription services fault that the online is bad it's the developers themselves that it's their fault the online service is bad well i think because part of the reason why microsoft has always charged for xbox live was to use that money and put it towards uh making their online infrastructure better and that was proof that has been proven over the years to be the right. case because uh sony for the longest time never charged for online and it showed because their online service was really bad to the point where it got hacked and got shut down for over a month 
Um, even when they started charging on the PS4, it just wasn't as good and as stable as Xbox had been because they had gotten the money to put into reinforcing it. And Nintendo never gave a shit about their online. And right. now they have the money to f- pump into it and they still haven't. You know, so, so- I'm, yes, it's a, it's a developer by developer case. But if you're developing for a Nintendo platform, they should be able to help with the infrastructure right. creating, you know, the online experience for their system. The, the the only thing that uh the only thing I agree with is that is that um uh stuff like Xbox Live and PlayStation Network uh they give developers tools to to use like like uh like how to find friends and 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 having yeah. a party system and all that Nintendo has trash tools for that so yeah Nintendo Switch Online that money should go towards those tools for developers absolutely one hundred percent. But most people's complaint with Nintendo Switch Online is stuff like Smash Brothers Online is laggy and shit like that. Yeah. And that's because they all use like a trash net code. And that's that's the the first party development. That's a first party development problem that they're working yeah. on fixing. They they have uh, a, a new server infrastructure or something or that, that, that they're working on. Monster Hunter was the first game to utilize that. Um, yeah. I believe Mario Golf has that. I don't know how much better that is. Uh, I haven't played too much Mario Golf, or I haven't played with I haven't played like online with randos, and that's how you can you know really stress test it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I guess I understand the argument because like uh, you need Nintendo Switch Online in order to play these games online. And then yeah. you get to the online, and it's not that great. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, but but again, it's it's the it's it that's a development issue. Um, yeah, I, I this is still cheaper than Xbox and PlayStation, uh, and and those retro games that you're getting are worth it at least to me. Uh, but I understand a yeah. lot of people aren't interested in playing retro games. Yeah, well. You got to remember, Virtual Console and 64 games on Virtual Console cost ten dollars each. And Sin mm. and Punishment was twelve dollars because it was an import. So already you're saving money, getting them all at once rather than you know buying them individually. But at the same time, you know we we have this. We've been trained because of Xbox Live um, that if you're paying for an online service, you're paying for a good online service. And Nintendo has not really shown that they're providing that for the money you have to pay every year. You know, you, yeah. you would expect you would expect Smash Brothers to have a better online code now because you have to pay for it, but it doesn't. You would expect Mario Maker to be even playable online, but it isn't. Yeah, so it's not at all. It, it it's all, you know, it's it's things like that. It, it's why people are upset. And yeah, we got N64 games. We we don't have a lot. We're still missing a lot of games on NES and SNES. Still no Earthbound. Still no Mario RPG. Still no Earthbound Beginning for the NES. Still no Star Tropics 2 or other games that they own that they could easily put on those services, but they just haven't. You know, still no Game Boy games. Still no GameCube games. Although at this rate, we'll probably get another expansion pack for GameCube games. Um. And the fact that, you know, the Genesis games are already playable. You could have bought Super Mario 64 already if you had the chance. But, you know, I, if this was a virtual console type deal where it's like a piecemeal where I could buy whatever I want, I would have significantly less games. I would have, yeah, honestly, just a handful. I don't think I would have many at all because uh, I don't need to play it on my Switch. Oh, most of the games that I would want to play on my Switch, I have other ways to play it. I would just, uh, uh, I just sometimes will play them on my Switch because it's convenient. So yeah. I'm willing to pl- to pay that subscription price for the convenience of of pl- having this huge library of retro games at my disposal. Um, and I understand not a lot of people would want to do that. Honestly, I I I would only suggest Nintendo Switch Online for people who want to play first party games online. I think the only one that's worth playing is Smash Brothers. I don't think any of the other first party Nintendo games are worth playing online at all. I wouldn't suggest it for anybody. Splatoon, maybe. 
Um, but Mario Kart, why would you ever want to play that online with random people? Maybe if you want yeah. to play it online with your friends, maybe you're in like a long distance relationship or something, but I don't see the, yeah. a reason to want to play Mario Kart online with your friends. That's a weird game to play online with your friends. Um, Animal Crossing, yes. Animal Crossing, maybe. Like, th these are weird games to suggest to people to play online with other people. Um, yeah. But, uh... The other reason I would suggest Nintendo Switch Online is for the huge library of games. And I think that that is honestly more worth it, especially with the Nintendo 64 games now. I think that's more worth it than playing any of those games online. It, it, it is worth it, but I still don't think there's enough games to justify such a huge price increase. Because, especially because Nintendo has shown that, like, yeah, initially they'll, they'll release a lot of games and then they'll just drip feed these games to you like very sparingly like it has been a long time since we got a new super nintendo game or a new nes game and so we don't know when banjo kazooie is going to come to the n64 collection it might take a very long time and we don't know what's going to come after that right so i don't i just don't know if i think this is a great idea but i think this is way too much money to ask for what they're offering Sukuyomi in the chat says, Bob is so casual he forgot Pokemon's online. I did not forget. I would never recommend somebody play Pokemon online. <laughs> Most of the people who ask me about video games or ask me about the Nintendo Switch don't need to play any of these games online. And if True. they and if they know enough where they might want to play online, they don't need my help. And and let just last night I was explaining to somebody who just got a Nintendo Switch. Uh, mm -hmm. and I knew that they liked old Pokemon games. I said, don't get Sword and Shield. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let's go Pikachu and Eevee. You might like that. And in a, f in a month, they're coming out with um, uh, uh, Diamond, and, Diamond Pearl. and Pearl. Yeah, the remakes. And, and you'll, you'll very much like those if you wait a month. Um, so, yeah. I, 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 I mean it when I say there's not many online experiences that I would recommend to people. So this is yeah. really for diehard fans and uh, 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 I just so happen to be one of those people. So I'm going to be, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be buying it. I really do want that library of N64 games. I think that's worth it in itself. Yeah. No, I, don't, I definitely think it is. I don't know. How, I mean, we wouldn't have a family plan if I didn't have to make content about this. That's for damn sure. Right. <laughs> I would just have my own freaking situation. Well, actually, maybe not, because uh, if we're both buying it anyway, why not? Yeah, it, ma it makes the most sense. Yeah, I don't know. But, I don't know where I'd be if, if I if I wasn't using this for content. Yeah, uh, I don't know, because I don't. I don't really play online with the Switch. And if I do, it's games that don't need it. I well, honestly, my, my my thing is I would definitely have online for Smash yeah. Brothers and stuff. Um, I don't know if I would buy the expansion pass. I am a little interested in uh, playing the N sixty four games online. Like the multiplayer is yes. online, and you could play with yeah. ran. I think you could yeah, you can match with random people. I think yes. Um, so I'm a little interested in that. That sounds pretty cool, especially for like I mean, well. Uh, I'd like to get some of the shooters on there, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's some good potential there. Yeah, no, there's definitely good potential. I just think at this moment we're not seeing it. We're not seeing, you know, everything that they have to offer. We're just seeing the very beginnings, and it's the very beginnings just doesn't look like it's justifying the price. Right. Uh, Thirteen I've Zath just... says, "I'll oh, go ahead, please." No, I was going to say, like, I've, one of the things I've heard was that the reason why it's so expensive is because Nintendo is compensating for the licensing costs they have to pay for to Sega and to uh, some of the third parties for the N64 games. So, but that still seems like a lot of money to justify, you know, taking care of licensing costs. Uh, there's de games. there's definitely licensing costs involved. I don't think that's the reason. I think the reason yeah. is mostly because uh they know that these games have a greater value than their nes and snes games because they're 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 more expansive and they they can they can sell them to a modern audience way easier i don't know if that's i think it's just they're technically harder to 
replicate outside of the N64 mm. ecosystem. So they pro- they're probably charging more to compensate for the development time needed to port them over to Switch Online. That is also true. They have to put a lot of work into each individual game, way again, more than they in, did on the other stuff. On the Wii, and I think it was the same on the Wii U, uh, for the Virtual Console, NES games were $5, SNES games and Genesis games were $8, and then N64 games were $10. Mm-hmm. So and that and they kept that price throughout the Wii and the Wii U life cycle. So they've always valued N64 games higher, I think, because of they're more technologically complex than the the eight and sixteen bit games. Right. Um, Thirteen Zath in the chat says, "Can we talk about how they're also charging an insane amount for the Genesis controller?" So, as you might know, they are selling yes. an N64 wireless controller. And a Sega Genesis wireless controller for this expansion pass. Uh, yes. You don't need the expansion pass to buy it. You do need Nintendo Switch Online, I think, to buy it. You do, yeah. So um, it they each cost fifty dollars, which is a lot uh, for the N for the Genesis. Controller. Yeah, for the N sixty four controller, it makes a little bit of sense. And like, you kind of need an N sixty four controller for these games. You could play them yeah. on a pro controller, but it's not going to be fun. Um, I mean, it's arguably not going to be fun with an N64 controller either. Yeah. <laughs> but a Genesis controller, it makes absolutely no sense to charge $50 for that thing. It's not yeah. that crazy of a controller. I mean, it's got the three buttons that I guess that layout is important for some games. But largely, you can use any controller for Genesis. Um, yeah. And there's al- there's already a bunch of controllers that are just like a Genesis controller for the Switch. Yeah, so, Retrobit so you, actually makes officially licensed Genesis controllers that are Bluetooth and compatible with the Switch. Officially licensed uh, by Sega? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they're exact replicas of of the six-button controller, no less. And 8-Bit, so also- 8-bit do also makes... Uh, uh, replica genesis controllers they're not officially licensed no um, the, the m30s but they are very good controllers and they're designed to emulate the feel of a sega genesis controller there's also uh this one has nintendo switch on it i think uh power a uh power a makes a sega saturn yes. style controller uh that's the, for fighting games but you can sure as shit use that for switch online yeah it's got the same sort of d-pad the the, the big disc d-pad mm-hmm. uh one problem with controllers like this, though, they don't work quite right with the button mapping of the Genesis collection on the Switch. Some of them are weird. Yeah. Uh, like the Ape Do one is a little, like, doesn't work quite right. Um, I'm not sure about this one. This one's cool because it uh, it has a switch. You can do the, uh, you can do a D-pad, left stick, or right stick. And that's this- honestly the only reason I would say justify buying the Genesis controller for Switch Online, because the buttons will then probably be accurate to what they were, you know, in the game. Whereas, you know, the uh, the Switch Online games, you, you can only remap the, bu- the buttons if the game allows you to. If there's no, like, system-wide button remapping for Switch Online. Th- there's, you can do it. There, th- there's the option to do it for the entire system. Right. But not for specifically no, well, for Switch no. Online. No, in Switch Online, you can change... Uh, you have two button mapping options that, that are hard you set. Yeah, you can move the B button to the top or bottom. You know, like like for the NES oh. games, you can like swap... You could swap the buttons so the B button is is uh, is horizontal or vertical, basically. Um, but I'm talking about like completely like remapping the buttons. That's, that's a problem they're going to run into with N64. N64 yeah. games need a good button mapping option. And I'm not even sure if you can remap the... uh, So so there is a system-wide button remapping that you could do on the Nintendo Switch uh, operating system entirely. Uh, And it works with the Pro Controller, it works with the Joy-Con, and it works great. And it memorizes what controller you have. So if you... uh, And I think it memorizes per game. I'm not too sure about that. Um, But I know it memorizes the controller. So if I plug in my, my Pro Controller... I can I can set it to have the buttons mapped a certain way, and it's pretty robust. You can pretty much map whatever you want. Uh, I'm not so sure that it works with the Nintendo Switch Online controllers. So uh, it might not. 
And that would be yeah. a huge miss. They, they have to know that they have to do something, especially with N64. Genesis is also going to be a problem, though. Um, yeah. That C button is going to need to be mapped in some way. Um, so, yeah, they're, 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 especially with N64, they're going to need some button mapping. And if it worked per game, that would be better because the C buttons are... They, if you're using a pro controller, those C buttons need to be mapped in some way. Like certain games, you can use the right stick. Certain games, you're not going to want to use the right stick. Yeah. Like like Ocarina of Time, using the right stick is not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Um, so and I'm already getting a lot of questions about uh, people asking me uh, what controllers are going to be good for this, or if if the uh, Hori uh, uh, Admiral is going to work. Um, Right now there are oh, yeah. or, right now there are zero N64 controllers for the Switch. That there's uh the Hori Admiral you can use an adapter to plug it in USB to the Switch and it just so happens to work. But you can't the, remap the buttons or anything. What about the Retro Fighter USB version? Can you connect that to the Switch? People are saying Brawler 64. Yeah. Uh that's it, Brawler 64. I thought it was only PC. I'm because it right I now. because yeah, if that would work, that might solve an, that might solve a problem for a lot of people, especially because it's a lot cheaper. But I, again, I don't know because if they if the switch maps those C sticks to the right analog stick by default, yeah, you know, that's going to screw a lot of things up. Yeah, you're no, oh Nintendo Switch. Oh, the net. Oh. There's a next gen version. Hmm. So, so okay. The original. Do no, wait. Oh no, that's okay. Yes. Apparently, the USB version does work. Well, I have one right here. I should just freaking plug it in. There you go. It says it works with the Nintendo Switch. I've never tried it. Okay. It's forty dollars. And 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 it is important to figure out what the hell the C buttons get mapped to. Mm -hmm. So that, so I, I lied. There is one N64 controller <laughs> that works with the Nintendo Switch. And again, this is my favorite N64 controller, by the way. Uh, yeah. Use and it I think it's actual, like, used it. Yeah. Use it for an actual N64 and use it for, you know, whatever the hell. Um, let's see. Do I have the top down? Boop. Uh, Connery Jump. Uh, did you mean the Hyperkin Admiral or the Tribute 64? Hori doesn't make the Admiral. It's true. Hori actually makes the Tribute 64. Uh, Hyperkin makes the Admiral, right? Yeah. Yes. Hori makes the Tribute. That's uh, that's not a Switch controller, is it? No. How how no, off base am I when I say that there's zero? Oh, oh no. Hori doesn't make the Tribute. Hori makes the original that the Tribute is copying. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. I think Retro Bit makes the tribute. Uh system settings. Well let's let's my control this brawler sixty four isn't working at all, by the way. Um uh, let's see. Uh your light beam is killing pork chop's eyes, by the way. Hey pork chop, shut up. Put on sunglasses, idiot. Nothing. Nothing. Honestly, this might not be one that works with the uh, Nintendo Switch. This might be an older one. Hmm. Yeah, wasn't that one of the first round ones you got? Uh, well, so I got the original because I kickstarted it. That was uh, right. But that was for the N sixty four. Right. This is the USB one. It says Nintendo Switch. It says the USB one works for Nintendo Switch. I threw out the box, so I have no idea. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't work. Worth a shot. We tried. We tried. Uh, I will. I. I. Uh, I will try this again when the Tesla Switch Online comes out. Again, even if you do have one that works, you don't know what the button map is going to be. So yeah. that's going to be potentially a problem. And I bet you it's going to not be great. <laughs> I bet you there's going to be a lot of hiccups because Nintendo doesn't give a shit about these third-party controllers. Yeah. Uh, 
Do you have a pro controller wired setting on Bob? Uh, that should matter for. Yeah. That only matters for the actual the pro controller. In. Yeah. So for the record, Chad is wrong 100% of the time. Says trouble. <laughs> um, I mean, no, their website says that it works with the Nintendo Switch. So clearly, something's just just wrong on my end. Maybe yeah. I maybe I have one that doesn't work with the Nintendo Switch. Um, I don't know. But uh, yeah, again, we won't know until we get this stupid thing, and it comes yeah. out next Monday. Next uh, Monday is when we're getting uh, the N64 games. So, yeah, I don't know when I'm getting the controller. Oh, another thing it says the controller ships on Monday. Another thing, so you, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Is that uh, a popular mod with the N64 controller is to put a GameCube thumbstick mm. where that thumbstick is. Now, the thumbstick on an N64 controller is absolute garbage. Um, and it looks as though this is the exact same thumbstick, even how like tiny and fragile it is. Yeah. Um, so that's going to wear down real quickly because they always do. Uh, I got the um, the GameCube style thumbstick uh, and I got I bought another N64 controller. So yeah. I'm going to do the mod on an actual N64 controller, and then I'm going to see if I can do the mod on this and this new N64 controller. I'm going to see gonna if be, it's cap if it's possible. I was going to say I'd be interested to see like what the insides of this N64 controller are if they are different from an original one because they did have to add they did add like um the home button and I think a capture button on it. Uh, they closed up the memory card port on the back so you can't put a memory card in there kind of sucks um but i also wonder if they were able to figure out a way to reinforce the analog stick or not so, probably so, not so but. it has it also has wireless and it has a, a rumble pack built in yes um but yeah that thumbstick looks as shitty as it always has it, it yeah i can't imagine them working out a way to reinforce that now i've haven't felt a real good N64 thumbstick <laughs> in a new N64 thumbstick. Yeah, it's since we got our N64. Yeah, back in 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 1978. So, yeah. um, I, so I I don't know. And people people every time I bring that up, people are like, "Mine was never bad. Mine was oh, it's great." It's like, no, it never was. It no, it lasts like a week and then I it mean, gets to shit. It probably was good, but you probably didn't play it that much, or you probably didn't play Mario Party true uh so i yeah i'm i'm curious to see how how uh if i could put a, a gamecube style thumbstick in it or if or if it's even yeah. uh, worth it or what the hell it's gonna feel like um but anyway that'll happen next week i don't know when the hell i'll get the controller i didn't even get the controller uh jackson got one for me so, oh yeah so i was gonna knows? say that that and the genesis controller are both sold out I did get the Genesis controller. The N64 controller sold out in less than an hour. Because everybody the, knows. You can't the, play N64 games with anything else. I woke up and it was sold out. Yeah. Uh, it's, and I got the I got the Genesis one because that's all I could get. And who gives a shit about the Genesis one? Yeah. Sorry, I'm seeing on the page, on the, the shop page for the controllers, there's a Metroid Dread hoodie. The front is really nice, but I don't like the back. I didn't buy it. was at the Nintendo store when I went to get uh, the oh, yeah. OLED Switch, and I didn't buy it because I thought the back was stupid. Yeah. The front is cool. The front is like that like hieroglyphic thing that they right. show on the loading screen, but the back is just a window picture of Samus and an Emmy. That's and it's a, bad, it's a bad print. It's like a full color print. It, mm. it It's like not silk screened. It looks like they like they like heat transferred a picture onto it. It doesn't look good. Uh, whack. Nintendo. The Nintendo store has a lot of cool clothes, but uh, they do. That was a miss. Um, I not today. I wore one one of them yesterday. That yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online is getting expensive. Yeah. Uh, but I'm still gonna pay for it, and that's the end of that. <laughs> um. 
where are we in notifications here? We got Jeppers, pee pee poo poo. <laughs> Thank you for the three months. We also have Miss Texone with 28 months. Thank you very much. We got In the Wild. Thank you for the 300 bits. We got Chris BX with 39 months. Just a little over $4 a month. That's peanuts. Sign me up. There you go. Uh, we also have Akuhime with seven months. One of my 8 controllers said to make sure the wired option was on. So it never hurts to check, though. Final check it and 13 Zath with the two months. Thank you so much. Uh, what else do we talk about today? Well, uh, oh, the analog, the pocket. analog pocket OS. This is different for them. Analog, the boutique retro console manufacturer, has made a tradition of of pining and of pinning announcements to today's date, October 16th. First was the Super NT, the their SNES clone in 2017, the Mega SG, its Genesis clone in 2018, the still unreleased Analog Pocket 2019, the similarly unreleased Turbo Graphics 16 clone, the Duo last year, uh, f- which leads us to this year's announcement, and it's not hardware. Analog wow. OS is the underlining. A uh, software that will run the upcoming Pocket and Duo and other future consoles, the company says. And no, the existing analog consoles are not planned to be updated with analog OS at this time. Uh, in addition to a very welcome visual ref- refresh, uh, which should better align the company's excellent hardware design. Chat was right. Chat was right. What? I got this stupid freaking uh, controller to work. I had to, I had to select wired. Oh, now I'm gonna uh, now I'm gonna go to the button map, the button settings. Yeah. So this is the retro fighter controller. B A X Y. Okay, so just like a pro controller. Ew, ew. Uh, up on the C stick is minus, and right is plus. <laughs> then what's the start button? Home. Oh, whack. Uh, let's see if I can change the button mapping. I don't think I can, though. Pro can you change it just for this controller? Yes. Wait, you can. You can change the button mapping. Oh, that's um, nice. What is... Uh, I'm, I'm having a stroke trying to think of what the button mapping is. Um, I'm just going to change the, um, oh, you can't change things to the right stick. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I can change things to the D-pad. So let's make, uh, let's make, let's make plus D-pad right. Okay. Uh, okay. So now when I go to, uh, uh, what is it? Test input devices. If I go like that, it didn't work. Oh. Did I not hit save? Oh, you did. That didn't work at all. Uh, it might have just changed it for an actual pro controller. That sucks. <laughs> oh no, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't take. It didn't take. Uh, let's try one more time. Uh, done. Your button mapping was changed. Okay, now it should work. So sorry, everybody. This is for science. Yeah, and you all know how important science is. Uh, don't worry, Will. It did not work again. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, one more time. Going back to the uh, change button mapping. It says it's changed. It didn't actually change. Uh, okay. All right. That's the end of that. Didn't work. Uh, button okay. mapping uh, uh, or, or results inconclusive. Maybe uh, somebody else can figure it out, but we, we here at the Wolf Den cannot figure it out. Yep. There you go. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. Analog OS is a new software that will run on the upcoming Analog Pocket and Duo and other future consoles, not any of the previously released consoles, however. In addition to a welcome visual refresh, 
Um, also comes really significant enhancements, most notably save states. Save states are a staple of software emulators, uh, allowing players to forego whatever built-in save functions exist in a game and immediately record their progress at any point, able to be resumed instantly. Anyone familiar with the traditional solution, leaving your console on indefinitely, uh, has appreciated this feature of emulation. It has also been a feature largely absent from FPGA-based hardware emulation outside of a handful of Mr. Clones. Misters? Very expensive. I don't know if they're worth it. I thought it was Meister. It's Mister. Apparently it is. Yes. I, I, uh, before you go any further, I want to explain this because there was a lot of people I saw on Twitter who didn't know what this was because... Right. Uh, uh let's go to analog's twitter i just yeah analog's an twitter anal. didn't do a very good explaining i typed in anal and it came up introducing okay. analog os here it is is what it looks like and people are like what the hell is this and i understand why uh it starts something big at its heart analog os is purpose built for exploring and celebrating all of video game history designed to be the definitive scholarly operating system for playing and experiencing the entire medium that is some like sniffing your own farts bullshit <laughs> if you ask me but re but I, I i do like analog and i am excited for yeah. uh for 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 this C like once you get past their flowery language, it's really just an OS for the analog pocket. But it's gonna, it's also gonna be an OS for their future consoles. Yes. Um, and honestly, I hope that it works on PCs and stuff because I'm so friggin' sick of a uh, uh, of a uh, uh, what what do you call it? Uh, retro arc. Retro arc. But they seem to make a point that this isn't uh, for uh, uh, ripping games or like ROMs or anything. Yeah, yeah so. no, they, they're they very big on like being as legal as possible, I guess you can say. They right. want you to play actual games on actual hardware. Um, they'll create the hardware for you, but you have to provide the games. Right. Um. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, in their little tweet thread. There's a lot of great pictures. They have really yeah. great graphic design. They have really great user experience. I like everything that they do. Um, but yeah, it seems like they're putting a lot into this OS. Uh, you, if you want to continue yeah. the article, you can go ahead. Um, thank Kevtris Analogs Christopher Tabor told Polygon, referring to Kevin Horton, its director of FPGA development. It is more than just being a complex but dually difficult to do this reliably, let alone on a physical cartridge. As far as I know, we're the first to we're the first to ever develop the technology to capture and load save states instantly during gameplay on physical cartridges. He's referring to most of the time when you try to emulate old games and you uh, implement save states into them, it's through software emulation. It's never really, according to him, it's never really been done with actual cartridges before unless you rip the ROM from the cartridge. This is doing it in real time on the cartridge itself. Yeah, how would that work? Well, I mean, I you have to, I guess, save the save. The save state gets saved to the system, but it recognizes the cartridge being the game that that save state goes to, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that's weird. It gets weirder. These save states will also be shareable with other pocket users. Also Ooh. shareable with other pocket users, screenshots and playlists. Screenshots are rather self-explanatory, but playlists are new. When you create a playlist, it will generate a file on your SD card, and you can share this file with other users, says uh, Christopher Tabor. Simply pull, simply pull it off your SD card and drop it on another pocket user's SD card, and they'll instantly have access to your playlist on the pocket. Uh, what is a playlist exactly? So, so it must be. So again, you can't share games. That would be no. illegal. So yes. the playlist must just be a collection of games that you then have to get yourself. Powering the playlist functionality is a new database that Analog is calling Library. It is built around a new level of standardization in terms of game title standard standardization, franchise publisher and developer organization, revision, depth, and more. It is 
being carefully curated by experts and researchers in conjunction with collectors with access to complete game sets. The ultimate goal of library is to be the end-all scholarly database for all of video game history. Library will take full advantage of analog developed proprietary technology to read physical game cartridges and detect all possible information on the game cartridge down to its revision. For example, Link's Awakening has 18 different versions regionally and revisions within each. Holy shit. Uh, many of these versions and revisions have differences from game art to graphics, text changes, bug fixes, and other quirks. You can walk into a game shop, plug the game into your pocket to read the cartridge and find out exactly what revision it is and all of its details. That is that's amazing. Insane. That is incredible. That's, that's fucking bonkers. That's just, awesome. Just the idea of that. I want There's like there's thousands of games available for the Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color. Yeah. Uh, I want to mention briefly, there was a console that we tried out at E3 two years ago. Yes. Um, yes. It, it, I don't remember the name of it. It, it was for the NES. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was literally a portable NES files. that you plug actual NES carts into. Yeah. And uh, the, the the purpose of it was for going to retro like swap meets and stores and stuff. And uh, seeing if the NES game works, it was bizarre. Here it is on screen. Yeah. Well, that's the guy talking about it. Um, I think it was by my arcade, and it's yes, huge. It it's absolutely massive. Uh, it's got it's ugly as all sin, but the purpose of it is to test games to see if they work. Um, yeah. And I guess since the analog pocket is hardware, it's actually running off of the cartridge. It would be yeah. totally fine to test cartridges out. And I guess you get a readout of all a bunch of different information on, on it if you, if you use the analog pocket. So that's freaking incredible. Yeah. Um, In addition to the new features coming to Analog OS, Tabor shared some information on the pocket's additional developer-facing FPGA. Uh, pocket has been purposely built with optimal hardware to make development and porting of pre-existing FPGA cores a breeze. Off-the-shelf dev kit uh, dev boards are naturally not built for this for this exact purpose. They're pricey, require tons of add-ons, difficult technical setup for most users, and limitations that cannot be ideally solved, namely different kinds of RAM without building something ex exactly for this purpose from the ground up. Um, Tabor notes, clearly targeting the Mister's platform's DIY approach and immense library of cores. You can expect to see pretty much every single third-party FPGA core out there on the pocket. So I remember when they announced the pocket, you know, it was, of course it was going to run on an FPGA chip, but there was going to be a second chip in there specifically for users to go in and modify and develop for. So that they right. can create their own homebrew games and port over games and add emulators that they want to add to there. Um, and he, he just basically expanded it on the role of that second chip. For the non-dev end user, it is as simple as dropping an FPGA core onto the pocket and it will serve and it will be served by our library and database offering an unparalleled experience. That experience will obviously work on the handheld pockets display, but will also work on HD TV displays via the optional dock and on CRTs using analogs existing DAC product. While Analog OS sounds exciting, the Pocket was announced two years ago now, and it's been delayed again to December. There are still plenty of frustrated would-be buyers who missed out on pre-order window for the units that still haven't shipped yet. Uh, Taper says more Pockets will be back in stock and shipping a bit after pre-order ship. Trust me, we're doing everything we can to keep these in stock. COVID hasn't done anybody any favors, but we've gone to great lengths to produce as many possible and continue to do so. Uh, I never got one. I thought yeah, I was me neither. I, well, well, no, you pre-ordered one. I didn't even yes. get the freaking pre-order one because I uh I was hoping that uh we would get a review unit because they have sent us right. ones before, but I never heard anything. Uh, but you got one just in case we had a problem, yeah, so that I, yeah, so that I could uh use that and make a video on that. Um, now uh. The, the analog made a huge tweet thread that's nice and pretty and at the very end 
They wrote, uh, Analog Pocket does not play copyrighted ROM files or dump game cartridges. It plays legacy game cartridges directly via the cartridge slot. To play a game in library, you will need to insert the game cartridge to play it. Yeah. I will add another asterisk on top of their asterisk. Um, the, uh, the, the Mega SG, the Sega Genesis that they made, uh was immediately day one hacked to allow roms um so the fact that this whole thing is so open source and they make it really easy to, for developers to screw with uh you, i i would be surprised if you can't eventually dump a rom out of it again don't buy things for the eventual maybe but yes. uh I'd be surprised if you weren't able to actually dump ROMs on on this on this thing, uh, and mean, that that changes some things like uh like going to a game store and popping it in. You could potentially just yeah. dump a whole ROM out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, th- you know, we were talking about going to a game store and testing games. Uh, why not just bring a Game Boy? <laughs> <laughs> you could just bring a Game Boy. Well, yes, but. Oh no! Because oh, well, this gives say, you like, other information too. Apparently, it does. It does give you a lot of. It tells you what version of the game you got. If mm-hmm. you're looking for a specific revision of it, then you know that's not. You don't have that in your hands, right? You, you would know. Um. Again, this isn't just Game Boy either. There's a lot of portable consoles that this thing works with, and if they yeah. do eventually put uh, custom firmware on here, if 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 hackers get their hands on it and put custom firmware on here, uh, you can potentially play any freaking game you want. The thing is really powerful. It's a very powerful yeah. device. I don't know how powerful. I mean, the screen's got a ridiculously high resolution for what it is. It's fourteen forty yeah. by fourteen. No, it's fourteen hundred by fourteen hundred. Or 1440 by 1440, something like that. Um, yeah, but it is it's it's big. It's I mean not bi- it's physically bigger than a Game Boy the the, the screen, but it's mm. very 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 pixel dense. Um, and one of the tweets that they have is unique features for unique systems. Analog is dedicated to highlighting each video game system's distinct hardware quirks and attributes with reverence. Uh, Pocket features original display modes that recreate with stunning, that recreate with stunning accuracy on a sub-pixel level the identical look and feel. A sub-pixel is what makes up a pixel. So, like, if <laughs> if you're looking at an LCD screen, the sub-pixel is the red green blue of each individual pixel so a sub pixel yeah. would be the red the sub pixel would be the blue the sub pixel would be the green so th- i usually just like using the crisp pixel look like the crisp the the, the crisp obviously emulated look but yeah. these look freaking awesome uh the game boy the original game boy the pea soup game boy looks incredible the uh the game boy color has those uh weird looking scan lines that a game boy color has uh, obviously yeah. it's backlit so you don't have so it'll still look good uh game gear looks as horrible as ever <laughs> just that one sonic game looks absolutely abysmal but uh no this is really they, they did a really good job here yeah. uh I don't know how powerful it's going to be. I don't know up to what if they hack it. I don't know up to what system it'll be able to play. I suspect. Yeah. I suspect it's not going to be playing N sixty four stuff. Uh, I think. You, I think PlayStation One maybe. Uh, yeah. Um, but this has is... potential of being the the best uh, handheld uh, retro console. Oh, absolutely. Um, the screen is sixteen hundred by fourteen forty resolution. So it is a fourteen forty p screen. So that is exactly 10 times the size of a Game Boy screen. Yeah. Game Boy resolution. Uh, Yeah, so an original Game Boy is 160 by 144. So this adds a zero at the end of both of those. 
So uh, this is going to be a beautiful console. And again, uh, what what? So they keep delaying it. What is the release now? December. December? No. Just, de- just December. Yeah, December. I thought they moved it to April. No, December. That seems so soon. So many things are happening. We got I the know. Steam Deck coming out. There's too. There's too much. I got as of, of right now, still tentative uh, release December. Okay. Uh, this is exciting. Again, uh, this OS, I mean, it's not for ROMs, which is a little disappointing. I really hope that people get this OS on PCs and it's, it, it's used for ROMs because I really love, um, the user experience of analog stuff. Uh, I think they have it down with, uh, with how to make things look really nice and how to, uh, uh, make it easy for people. I really yeah. don't like, uh, retro arc and there's some good skins on it but uh the analog is like the apple for uh for for uh portable uh consoles and retro gaming i don't it's hard consoles in general yeah it's hard to not say emulation (laughs) well they're doing they don't want to be known as emulation because they're not using any software right to, to like recreate the the game consoles they're building new versions of these game consoles on a chip level from Mm -hmm. scratch Mm -hmm. so that's their whole thing it's really high end it's really technical it's really advanced compared to like what a lot of the other companies uh do like your hyperkins and your whatnots like nobody uh or polymega even nobody's really doing it on this level right that's why like i that's why analog you know their stuff is more expensive their stuff is like not always in stock but it's worth it in the end because they're putting all the time and effort and quality into making the best possible version of a sega genesis or an snes or eventually a game boy there's nothing wrong with getting a uh, uh, uh retro or portable emulator that you can like tinker with and get running really good there's nothing wrong with getting an android yeah. phone and putting some some nice uh uh joy con style controllers on there and, and 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 uh putting a nice ui on it and making it really easy for emulation there's nothing wrong with getting a pc and running retro arc and putting a skin over retro arc uh but yeah. me and i assume most other people do not want to do that i want to buy a thing and have it work yeah um Another potential problem with something like this is that uh, the retro games market is insane right now. So, yes, buying games to play on this is not going to be fun. Luckily, no. we already have a lot of uh, games that'll work great right on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I made sure to get the uh, Game Gear uh, adapter so we can play our Game Gear games very again. <laughs> again, I have a lot of faith that this is going to end up emulating stuff very well. Um, but that's not what they're selling it as. So don't buy it for that. No. Buy it if you already no. have a bunch of Game Boy games that you want to play. Uh, so I'm excited for this. This is going to be cool. I yep. didn't know it was coming out as early as December. Uh, yeah. Do you know where we got it shipped to? Was it your place or my place? Because I, I need it immediately. I say my place. Let me just see if I can find that email. <laughs> I'm coming over. Yeah, I will. you will get a text as soon as I get it. And anyway, work something out. I won't even open it. I'll just give it to you. Let me. Uh, well, yeah, you can't open it. I got to unbox it. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me. Uh, let's move on to yes. uh, talking about the new MacBooks. This something is a weird not topic. Gaming related, but this is exciting. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people. We we've been talking about this a lot on the podcast. People ask me about this, so I figured, you know what? It's worth a, it's worth a whole ass topic. Uh, yeah. I've been waiting for this for possibly two years, over a year. When did the M ones come out? Yeah. Why do I want to say last year? I think the M ones came out last year, but the rumors that they were coming out was way before that. Yeah. Uh, I want so I here's my little history. I had. I have a MacBook. Will has a MacBook. We like Apple yes. computers here. We do. Uh, right now, I am on a, a, a custom-built PC. 
uh, I built this as a Hackintosh. So this computer that I'm on right now at, was at one time dual booted. It had two hard drives in it. I could run Mac on it and PC. It was a fucking nightmare building this computer. It's been a nightmare trying to maintain it. So I finally, about a month or two ago, I uh, I, I ditched the Apple partition. I, it's a full-fledged uh, Mac right now. I mean, I'm sorry, it's a full-fledged PC right now. So for the past two months or so, I've been editing and doing everything on Windows. And for the love of God, I want to die. I, I'd much rather be doing this on, on, on Mac. I use my MacBook to an extent, but my MacBook is a late 2016 dual core. Uh, it's not very good for editing 4K footage. It does its best, but it needs it. it I desperately need an upgrade. So uh, I've been I've I've had this plan where I was gonna uh, just use this computer here as a Windows computer, and I was gonna get a beefy MacBook and plug the MacBook in like a dock and use that for most of my video editing and stuff. Um, I've been putting off doing that because I know that they're coming out with these freaking new processors that are gonna be built by Apple. They're gonna be amazing and they're gonna be great and everything. So I don't want to buy a MacBook. And then have them come out with a better MacBook like like a week later. And I've been yeah. waiting for over a year because I've been, I they came out with the M1s, but the M1s were only on the on the chintzy little MacBooks. They didn't make the big beefy one. Everyone's like, you gotta wait, they're gonna make big beefy one. Now they finally uh, uh, the, 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 what was it, yesterday? Yesterday they yeah. made a big beefy one finally. Um and not just one. Two. Two. So here it is. We got the M1 Pro. It's a new processor or system on a chip really and they made an m1 max so now fuck i gotta spend a lot more money than i thought because i can't just get the pro will i'm gonna be pissed later when i go to edit one thing one time in after effects <laughs> so these these I feel like you could get away with the pro i probably could these things are incredibly powerful the m1 chip is basically, I mean, the M1 Pro and Max chips are basically an M1 chip times four to glued together. Yeah. Uh, let me. I had a I had a picture of it on. on yeah, here it is. Um, no, this isn't a good example. The analog is coming to my house, by the way. Okay, I'm coming so, over. All right. Uh, so anyway, here it is, the Pro and the Max, baby. This, so this is the 14 and 16 inch uh, MacBook Pros. Um, well, I think only the 16 inch get the M1 Max, right? Uh, okay, so let me let me see if I can do this without revealing too much information. It, it is con confusing. It is confusing. I would have been fine with a uh, with a 14 inch. Yeah, you can get the 14 inch with a max in it, but it's an upgrade. Okay, so right. the baselines that you have here, so you got the 13 inch, which is just the regular M1. It's not a Pro or a Max or whatever. I wonder if you can get those with a Pro or a Max. That'd be interesting. Um, but here you go. The new one is the 14 inch. 13 inch. I don't think you can. So the new one is the 14 inch uh, with the with it, it. It's got two. It's got Pros here. The memory is yeah. unified, so it's video and RAM memory. Yeah. Uh, I was... So, so you can just get the 14-inch and upgrade it to the max, but the specs that they have here, you can go to the 16-inch, and then you have the Pro, the Pro, and then all the way at the end is finally the max. Um, this one, it's a 10-core CPU, 32-core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory. That means it's shared between RAM and video memory. Uh, and it's yeah. got one terabyte of storage. And again, this is the max and it's $3,500. And it's the one that I got. I oh, was gosh. I was going to get the 14 inch and put up uh, and put the, the max in it. But it was only uh, I think it was the same price or it was like $200 cheaper. It really didn't save any money just getting the 14. Yeah. Uh, plus, I think you get more video unified memory if you just freaking get the if you just get this one, the 16 inch. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. But I figured this is going to be my main rig. This is what I'm going to what I'm going to be using for everything. So uh, uh, I might as well go balls to the wall on it. 
And, and and now I have a lot of other questions. Uh, so this thing, uh, finally, they've they're they've they've done it. They're they're so innovative. Apple, they gave us ports on the sides of, yes. of the of the MacBook. Yes. Uh, finally, we have uh, uh, not just Thunderbolt four ports. Uh, we have an HDMI port, a full-size HDMI port. We have the SD card reader is back. That's they nice. That's important because if it's going to be a pro device, pros are going to want to just stick their SD card in there and not fumble with dongles. I'm a pro. I love sticking my SD card in places and I don't want to fumble with dongles. So here it is. Uh, you got the SD card. It's got a headphone jack. It's got a full size HDMI. It's got a couple of Thunderbolt threes. Uh, it's and I'm uh, loving every second of that. Another question of mine is, how am I going to dock this thing? My plan was to have this thing in like a little dock. Um, my plan was to have like a Thunderbolt uh, four, or I, I was thinking Thunderbolt three. I had no idea Thunderbolt four was even a thing. So uh, <laughs> my plan is to get a Thunderbolt four dock and have it connect to all my monitors and stuff but i didn't anticipate they were gonna give us more ports so uh uh i i think you can still dock it no you can you absolutely can it's yeah. just it's just i might want to use the hdmi uh, port now instead right. so i can free up more ports one thing that is very exciting is that magsafe is back my usb yes. the friggin thunderbolt 3 port on my current macbook is like loose it's horrible. It like the yeah. the stupid cable comes out all the time while I'm trying to charge it. Um, What's so, cool is this the new MagSafe. It's MagSafe three, and it's also um, the other end is a USB C cable. Mm -hmm. So you can, if you need a new brick, you can just buy a new brick, and if you need to replace the cord, you can just replace the cord. Yes, that's yeah. The old MagSafes were not like that. Uh, I'm glad that they learned that because. Uh, I do like that about the current um, uh, 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 charger thing. I actually, yeah. I actually did buy a whole new uh, uh, USB C cable for the uh, for the uh, for the charger. Pe yeah. pe people in the chat are, are 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 going back and forth between calling it USB C and calling it Thunderbolt Four. Uh, we we haven't misspoke here. The char the the charger has a USB-C port in it. The MacBook has a has Thunderbolt 4 ports. So for the hub that I want to buy, I want it to be a Thunderbolt 4 hub. Now it's the same it's the same physical port, the, but the, it's different workings on the inside. The shape of the port is the USB-C shape. Shape, yes. The the connection, the type of connection is Thunderbolt connection. Yes. This is opposed to traditional USB. There's a fly flying around. There's, that's opposed to traditional USB 3.0 connection or uh, USB super speed or any other type of connect, connection or speed that also happens to use the USB C shape. It's very bad and confusing. <laughs> And they need to sort their shit out because it confuses me every time. So USB-C stuff works just fine on these MacBooks. My old MacBook yeah. also and these MacBooks, USB-C stuff is going to work great. Thunderbolt 4 stuff will not work on USB-C ports. It has to be a Thunderbolt 4 port. Just, yeah. So... um. So Thunderbolt 4 stuff will work just fine here, but if you happen to get um, um, a different computer, like a PC that has USB-C on it, Thunderbolt 4 stuff is a no-go. So I like at yeah. the office, I have a big G drive uh, RAID system that is Thunderbolt 3, and that does not work with a USB-C cable or USB-C uh, ports at all. It, it needs Thunderbolt 3, and uh, hopefully right. it'll work on Thunderbolt 4. I'm sure it will. Sure it will, yeah. Um, but what's interesting, though, is that that G drive has a daisy chain. It has a Thunderbolt port in it, mm -hmm. so I can plug it into my computer, and I can plug a USB-C device into the Thunderbolt 3 port on the G drive, and it works. And it daisy nice. chains into my computer. Anyway, go. 
I don't know what type of dock I'm going to get with this thing. I think I'm just going to plug it in USB-C into my EVE Spectrum monitor. Another interesting thing, USB-C can handle 4K 120 frames per second. And this uh, MacBook can supposedly handle that too. The yeah. display on it is 120 hertz. I don't know the resolution. It's something ridiculous. Yeah, it's definitely way more than it needs to be for a 16-inch screen. Yeah. Tech specs. Uh, 16 inch uh, baby yeah uh, it's got a lot of nits that doesn't tell me what the resolution is uh it's, uh, also, it's very ahead. big yeah it's 30 it's 3456 by 200 2234 native resolution that's that's a lot <laughs> 254 pixels per inch that's almost print resolution <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's not 4k but very 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 close to 4k yeah um i was gonna say it's a full-size keyboard they said it's similar to the uh keyboard that you would get with an imac and there's no fucking touch bar on it yo i'm so anymore. happy there's no touch bar i'm so glad i missed the touch bar i purposely got yeah. my 13 inch macbook because i didn't want the touch bar it was the first yeah. ones it was the first line that came with the touch bar and i was like absolutely not i don't want that touch bar yeah um uh, i've been avoiding it like the plague and now i'm happy that they don't have it in this version <laughs> so it does have a notch where the camera goes yes uh, that is very annoying but that's where the taskbar is going to live. Yeah, so it's really not a big deal. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be as bad as everyone thinks it's going to be. So the the resolution is actually taller than 4K. Slightly taller than yes. 4K, but not as wide as 4K because it's like a 4 by 3 situation. MacBooks are weird yes. like that. Yeah. But most laptops are weird mm -hmm. in aspect mm -hmm. ratio. Uh, but I'm excited to be able to plug this into some monitors. I'm going to have to redo some stuff here if I'm going to get a dock for here. So for the office, I'll have it plugged in USB-C to my Eve Spectrum unless I run into some problems. Um, I, I'm happy it has other ports so I can use those ports for other things. Um, here, I'm going to want to have a dock situation. Uh, yeah. CalDigit makes a cool dock that I'm interested in. Um, Anchor makes a lot of good docks. Anchor was the first thing I looked at. Uh, Anchor makes yeah. ones that are are really high wattage, so they could charge it pretty yeah. good. None of them make ones that are 140 watts. This this MagSafe is going to be 140 watts for the for the 16 inch. Um, the Anchor one gets Damn. up to 96 watts, I think, and the CalDigit one only does 60. But I don't know what it's going to what the wattage is going to be going through uh, Thunderbolt four though yeah that's gonna be uh that could be different uh so i don't know but i i i think i want that cal digit one it does the anchor one has usb ports the cal digit one does not so uh i still need some dongles coming out of the cal digit one well but, can uh, you charge this through one of the usb c ports or can you only uh, charge it through the max safe you mean thunderbolt 4 and yes they they did that's say that what you could, i mean they did say you could charge it through that Okay. And you can use a USB-C cable to charge it via the Thunderbolt 4 port. Yes. But it has to be a USB-C cable that's rated uh, compatible with charging, not just data transfer. Correct. That's that's something you got to fucking worry about. Uh, there's ones that have transistors in them, which are important because you could blow out your freaking computer if you don't use that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would never recommend taking a Nintendo Switch charger and plug it in your MacBook that way. That You're going to run into some yeah. problems. So anyway, I'm excited about this. Supposedly, it's shipping next week. I plan on making a video about this on the personal channel. Uh, it might take a while to come out, though, because it's not a priority to me. Uh, and plus, I want to take a little while to use it and like uh, yeah. see how it is for uh, video editing. I suspect it's going to be fucking incredible. So another big was, reason yeah. I got it was because uh, it has... Even the pro, even the regular pro one, not even the max. The pro one has has special uh, uh, threads in in the processor just for video. So uh, uh, hardware accelerated H.264, ProRes, ProRes Raw. It's got a video decode engine, video encode engine, uh, ProRes encode decode engine separately from the other ones, uh, and it can do handle multiple streams of 4K and and 8K video. And then the max one. 
just multiplies that. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be a, a fucking beast. Um, I'm a little worried about uh, thermals, but because it, it is a MacBook, and I might have the the lid closed when I'm using it, but. I'm not doing like 3D rendering. I'm I'm really just going to be uh editing 4K footage. So everything I've seen from like the MacBook Air and the first gen MacBook Pros with the M1 chip say that like it runs it like it doesn't overheat yeah. like at all. It runs very well. So I'm assuming that this is going to be the same thing cuz that's part of the reason why they ditched Intel was because Intel couldn't handle the thermals that Macs were outputting. I'm glad they started making their own chip because it seems like they yeah. can do a lot more for themselves. Uh, I I mean, they used to do the freaking, uh, what was it called? Way back in the day before they used Intel's. Um, the Power PC. Yeah, right. and everybody hated those. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now they're back on it because it looks like they can, it looks like they've, they're able to do some stuff. I mean. Well, I think they've, they've learned from the iPhone and the iPad, you know, making their own chips for that. Mm -hmm. And then subsequently all their other devices. Why not make it for a computer? Uh, Dragon's Path with the two months, thank you, says, what kind of gaming you think the Max can do? Max settings, 120 frames. They had, they talked about Unity and, and they talked about uh, game development and, and playing games on the M1 Max. And it seems like a powerhouse for playing games. I have little faith that any developer is going to develop anything for it. They always just play lip service to games, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's kind of sucks because, you know, if they put the resources into it, it could be a gaming powerhouse. It still won't be PC, but, you know, companies will port over their games to Mac. No problem. But they don't. They don't care. It's it's the craziest thing. Like it makes no they care more about it on iPhone but not on not on Mac. So S Unity has like a save as where you, where you could like yeah. just have it on, on Apple. Obviously, you're going to have problems with like some powerful games. Um, yeah. I hope that I hope that some develop I hope that they make it easy for a lot of developers to just to just put it on Apple because uh, there's a lot of great potential here. This thing's going to be a beast. Yeah. Um, Bob, can you let me know if the M1 Max comes with Nanosaur? My MacBook Pro doesn't include it. What the fuck is that? Is this like a D's nuts situation? Oh, it's a fucking stupid looking game. What the hell is this? Who made this? It doesn't uh, even have a developer on it. Oh, it's from it's it's from Mac OS nine. Pangea Software. Great, dude. Uh, we also have In the Wild with 100 bits and Holly Vengeance with the seven months. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for helping fund my MacBook fund. Yes. It was a very painful, uh, uh, you know, very painful purchase. Yeah. They let you split it between two cards on the website. Really? Yeah. See, I have an Apple card. So when I buy mine, I, I can pay it month by month. I should have used your Apple card because then you get 3% back. Yeah. Oh, well. Maybe next time. <laughs> Maybe next time. That is a lot of money to put on a freaking it card, is. though. But that's why I'm waiting till next year because I want to like save up a little bit and price it out and then buy it. And I'll do the month-to-month -month payment because there's no interest. So E bought one and he's doing month to month. He bought the the M1 Max 64 um, uh, gigabit one. So he he got really? the more expensive one that I got. Yeah. I also had uh, today. I had Wood and Spawn Wave both DMing me about getting a, a a MacBook, and I don't know if I could recommend like people who are like mostly PC users going to Mac. I feel like. Like like Wood is probably gonna have a bad time. Uh, yeah. Spawn Wave, he's he's used Max before, so he he's uh, he's probably gonna be and uh, he, and he's you know like he used to work at a PC repair shop. He's like he like knows his yeah. shit. Um, I feel like Wood would just get frustrated. <laughs> yeah. 
and again, like the the sixteen inch and the fourteen inch specifically, those are for people who like do professional grade work. Mm-hmm. So like we would need it, but like if you just want something to watch Netflix and answer email, maybe you know you'd get the cheaper ones like the Air or the thirteen inch. I used to only always way- get the the cheap thirteen inches. Yeah, this is a the one I'm rocking right now is a thirteen inch. Mm-hmm. So. I, the only way reason I would say maybe get the 14 inch, even if you just want to, you know, do internet stuff, is because you have those extra ports, so you mm-hmm. get more flexibility in what you can do with it. So I, uh, I got the 13, the cheap 13 inch. Uh, it, I, it was a dual core Intel, and it, I hate it. But I mean, I didn't have for what it was, and I didn't have a lot of money like when I bought it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I, it did. It did. Did. Did his job for me uh, for a yeah. long time, uh, but uh, yeah, I I know a lot of people uh, who want uh, like the idea of like being able to edit 4K raw video, but they're never gonna get to doing it. They just like knowing that they can. Yeah. Most people are just kind of you know uh, doing either light video editing or or uh, or. I mean, most people are just answering emails and going on Facebook, yeah. but. Uh, even if they do edit videos, it's probably going to be some light video editing. So, yeah, uh, you're probably fine with the baseline 14 inch. And what? How much was that? It's like two thousand. Yeah, it's still a lot. It's still, it's yeah. still a lot for a for a laptop. But I mean, this is a super powerful laptop. You can plug it into an external monitor, and you got a freaking uh, uh, yeah. You got a desktop you could take with you anywhere. So. Uh, this is exciting. This is, this is, uh, I'm excited for this. It hurts my wallet, but, um, but I'm, uh, happy I could finally get the setup that I want. I just hope that it is as much of a powerhouse for my workflow as, as, uh, they're saying it is. Anyway, uh, we went on for a long time about Apple. Yes. Uh, let's talk about dbrand very briefly. Yes. Uh, so if you may remember D. Um, there was another company back up a little bit. There was a one company, I forgot the name of it. They've tried to make uh third party face plates for the PlayStation five. Cause as you know, the white face plates can come off. Um, and this company made replacements for them in black. Sony did out a cease and desist, did not like it. Um, so that company stopped making face plates. So that D brand stepped that in. That company was yeah. literally called like PlayStation Plates or something. Like, the, like they yeah. had, they, they were very clearly trying to sound like they were Sony. So, like, right. I kind of understand why they got a cease and desist. Yeah. Uh, so D brand stepped in and said, "All right, we'll do it. Sue us, Sony." And Sony did. Uh, mm-hmm. D-Brand began selling dark plates uh, earlier this year. Gamers who weren't satisfied with the PlayStation 5's stark white faceplates for aesthetic reasons could replace them with black dark plates. In an announcement post from Reddit last year, the company responded to a query about Sony taking d- uh, dark plates down with, we encouraged them to try. They also <laughs> said, sue us, Sony, in the post. It seems Sony is threatening to do just that. Dbrand itself posted the cease and desist letter to Reddit with commentary, and this is one of the quotes. Notwithstanding Sony's serious concerns about Dbrand's conduct, and despite your company's adoption of the tagline, go ahead, sue us, presumably with Sony in mind, Sony would like to offer Dbrand the courtesy of resolving this matter without the initiation of formal legal action. Dbrand points out in their Reddit-based uh refutation the symbols that sony are claiming the company infringed on are the triangle x circle square buttons d brand points out that these altered symbols on the dark plates they altered the symbols on the dark plates so they don't exactly resemble those used in sony's own plates it also compares itself to car after parts manufacturers um so that was yeah that was one of the things sony added a bunch of uh d brand added like knockoff versions of the X uh, circle triangle square on their face plates, kind of like as a mocking of Sony. And Sony's yeah. like saying like, no, uh, we trademark those. Yeah, I read through this whole thing. Uh, they also compare themselves yeah. to Squid Game. They were like, Squid Game used the Sony uh, symbols. Sue them. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I saw it before I started watching Squid Game, I'm only an episode in. But like I saw that meme going around and I'm like, is that a Sony thing? It's missing an X. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I mean, like I kind like I like I get where D Brad's coming from. I also get where Sony's coming from. But they do compare themselves to aftermarket uh car part manufacturers because like yes. uh it it would be weird if like you bust your bumper and you can only buy a Ford bumper, you know? Uh wow. and, I mean, unfortunately, that's the way a lot of cars are going nowadays. Yeah. Like, you have to go to the dealership to replace parts and stuff. So, you know? uh, it shouldn't be too weird to get uh, an aftermarket faceplate. I mean, uh, but... It, it, it shouldn't be, but it is, because I know Sony, like, they specifically designed those faceplates um, to better compensate their thermals in there, because the PS5 runs very hot. Mm-hmm. And it's got all those fins and stuff so that it can take more air in and like push out all the hot air. Right. So, so, so probably very protective of that design. They D brand also says that they don't have a patent on the uh panels. They have a patent on the entire uh PlayStation 5 that is pending. Yeah. Uh but I'd say the patent on the whole PlayStation 5 is probably enough because this is like yeah two-thirds of the playstation 5 yeah <laughs> so uh i don't know if that argument uh withstands but i am not a lawyer um anyway it's it's they i would say they should be fine but i don't i think legally they're probably not fine well uh, yes just in case D brand has revealed a brand new design for its PS5 Dark Place just days after yanking the original designs from sale. Yes. <laughs> so, just in case you still want different plates, D brand's got you covered. Dark Plates 2.0 look like look a little different from the original model. While they still attach to the side of the PS5, the new dark plates are more rounded instead of having quite uh, quite as much of the sharp, popped collar look that closely that's closely associated with Sony's console. They also now have a prominent vent right next to the PS5's fan. The new dark plates come in three colors, matte black, retro gray, and white. Ooh, I didn't see the other colors. Yeah. This is ugly as all sin. Uh, I already think the PlayStation Five is ugly. Uh, I, I, I like the the fins not being there. Uh, I get the idea. It makes it look cheaper, and what makes it so much more that freaking that fan cutout is is atrocious. Really? Because I think this looks better. I don't I think, think the, it looks better I think at the all. The fins on the on the PS5 look so stupid. I th- I and think like, I think they do look stupid. I think that uh, this makes the rest of it look stupid. Like at least with the fins, you're like, all right, the fins are dumb. This, it's yeah. like all those curves are dumb. <laughs> and the and the fan it makes the fan is 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 an abomination. Yeah. Um, but is this new design enough of a difference to avoid Sony's ire? Dbrand claims so, even going as, fa- as so far as to bold some of their text uh, for uh, The Verge. By creating a brand new design, D- Dark Plates 2.0 successfully closes the loop on this dispute and neutralizes any future infringement claims from Sony. Uh, however, in the original season the Sis letter, Sony threatens to initiate legal action unless Dbrand does three things. One, promptly and permanently ceases and takes down all marketing and promotion for and ceases all sales worldwide of faceplates featuring the product configuration of Sony Interactive Entertainment uh, PSS faceplates or any similar product configuration, including, without limitation, all faceplates currently on sale at dbrand.com. Two, promptly and permanently ceasing and taking down all marketing and promotion for and ceasing all sales worldwide of products or packages bearing the PlayStation family mark, the modified shape mark design, any other PlayStation mark, or any other uh, indicata of Sony Interactive Entertainment. And three, Promptly and permanently cease and take down all use of the PlayStation mark, uh, any similar marks, any other marks, branding, or indicata 
uh, associated with Sony Interactive Entertainment or its affiliates, including without limitation within product names. I don't see any of that on their website. <laughs> I don't see any of the gray. This website is awesome, by the way. This this yeah. uh, this the dark plate website. I'm scrolling through it, and it, it does all these little cool animations. It's freaking awesome. To, you have to scroll down to the bottom to select your color for when you pre-order it. Make a choice. Oh, disc or digital? Yeah. And there's LED strips too. Yeah, you can uh, get LED strips right. I guess I'll get the disc version. Oh, here they are. Oh, you can get. LED. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. So, uh, uh, E has it like this at the studio. He has the dark plates, and then he has this uh, the the robot camo on the middle. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. How I feel about the lights. I think it already has good enough lights in it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd want any of these colors. Uh, product is currently up for pre-order for fifty nine ninety nine, and it will be sixty nine ninety nine when they are available on a regular basis. Nice. Z Brand says the first batch will ship in November, and stock will go out uh, in monthly waves after that. Uh, so you know what? It looks it looks like it looks like a knockoff. Is what it looks like. It looks like it's changed just enough so that it looks like a third party thing. I don't. I don't. Uh. It's sad. It's sad what happened. I don't think they should have been sued, but uh, no. Uh, and I and I like the way the dark plates were originally, but uh, this is a sad change that they had to make. I know. I, I mean, it, it's it's ridiculous that Sony like went so went that far to like prevent them from making, you know, making a, from preventing anybody from making uh, third party uh, plates for the PS5 because right. there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to. Um, it doesn't affect the system as a whole, um, especially if they follow a particular design pattern. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if this is what they got to do, then this is what they got to do. Dbrand also has like a like a pattern for smartphones and stuff um, mm -hmm. that uh, has a Nintendo Switch logo in it. It has an Apple logo in it. It has the Android logo in it. And it's like, yeah. you know, Apple and Nintendo are not allowing them to do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, certain third-party companies get given the license, like uh, I was just showing this controller before. It has the Nintendo Switch logo in it, and I'm sure Power A has has the license to do that. I'm not sure D-Brand would get the license to put it on a skin with other logos. Yeah. So, uh, it's a little sketch. It's a little weird. But anyway, they don't seem to care. They seem to have some good lawyers really over don't. there at Dbrand, and you know what? Good for them. I think it's. I think yeah. we need more people fighting against these big corporations, especially anyway. for something as innocuous as like an accessory. Yeah, I mean, they should be totally fine making an accessory yeah. like that, as long as it's not making a whole ass PlayStation Five. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of the PlayStation Five, will uh, it happened for, for the somehow. first time. In three years, the Nintendo Switch is not the best-selling console of the month. Insane. <laughs> Insane. Sony's PS5 has become the first console to outsell the Nintendo Switch in the U.S. in nearly three years. PS5 outsold the Switch in September in the U.S., according to data from retail analytics group, uh, the NPD group. The Nintendo Switch has been the best-selling console in the U.S. for 33 months in a row, even outselling both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X during their launch periods. That extended run has come to an end. The PS5 uh, was the best-selling hardware platform in September in both units and dollars. Um, the PS5 is the best-selling hardware platform of 2021 year-to-date in dollars, while the Nintendo Switch leads in units. MPD Group only tracks sales in the U.S., so it leaves out big markets like Europe and Asia. It is not clear if Sony just managed to ship more consoles during September or whether Nintendo struggled with Switch supplies and or just softer demand ahead of the OLED Switch launch. Either way, Nintendo could regain the top spot in October if Switch demand jumps again and if Nintendo is able to ship enough OLED models. The PS5 is Sony's fastest selling PlayStation with more than 10 million consoles sold so far. Nintendo has managed to sell 89 million Switch consoles since its launch 
in 2017. Microsoft still doesn't disclose Xbox hardware sales, but Daniel Ahmad, a senior analyst at Nico Partners, shared on Twitter estimates earlier this year that placed the Series X and S uh, at around 6.6 .6 million as of June 30th. That is a lot. Yeah, it's a uh, lot for systems that I still don't see in stores. Yeah, that that's not finished yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so we saw this uh, also when the Switch came out. Uh, it was nobody saw them in stores. It was very hard to get, but it was the top selling console uh, yeah. because every time they'd stock the shelves, they would disappear. So uh, the PlayStation Five is going to be like that for a while, especially with these stock shortages. I think this holiday season, uh, for the first time in a while, the PlayStation Five might be the hot ticket item. Yeah. Um, but. So Nintendo just released the OLED version, uh, right? A week ago, two weeks ago. So uh, it's possible the OLED Switch could pump these numbers up slightly, but uh, the Switch has been out for over four years now. Yeah. So uh, it's time for the the trajectory to 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 slope down a little bit. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say eighty nine million units. Like that's. You know, anybody who wanted a switch would have gotten it by now, because mm -hmm. like that—that's around like what the best-selling systems, you know, usually sell. So it would it would be understandable for it to like take a dip for a while while these new systems come in and start, you know, catching momentum. Right. Uh, RP says, "True, I went to Target browsing these two weeks, and all they had was Switch Lite." Was it a yellow switch light? Because that's all I ever see is the yellow one. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's about time for 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 another console to to, to swoop in the the, the top spot. And yeah. I'd assume that this holiday season they're going to do pretty good. I wonder where Xbox is at because uh, Xbox I don't expect them to get uh, best selling console situation. Well, but I'd I'd hope that we're at least able to see them in stores. According to Daniel Ahmad, uh, the Series X and S have had total sell-in at 6.6 .6 million as of June 30th. Damn, that's uh, but, that's low compared to PlayStation 5. Compared to PlayStation 5, but at the same time, that's not bad, all things considered. Because mm -hmm. I believe the they never disclosed what, how many Xbox One they sold, but the general consensus was it was 2 to 1 compared mm -hmm. to the PS4. And the PS4 sold like... If PS4 sold like 100 million units, then that means like the Xbox One only sold about 50. Damn. Uh, interesting. So uh, hopefully whoever wants to get one this holiday will be able to get one. Uh, yeah. Make sure you have that nowinstock.net open or zoolert.com and, and uh, hope for the best. Uh, but I'd imagine they're going to get stocked up. Relatively yeah. soon, at least. Uh, no deal. You're not going to get any deals. Don't expect that. No. No. Uh, let's plow through some more news. We have Valve's Deck Verified program evaluates which Steam games are Steam Deck ready. I read yeah, this so and I, I watched their videos on it. Yes. I know a lot of people were concerned about like what games are going to be compatible with the Steam Deck. Valve was kind of hinted them. that like, Valve's kind of hinted that like every game should work, but there might be some that don't so they just went ahead and made a video explaining like we're gonna have a verification process there's gonna be uh what was it it's gonna be four different markers it's gonna be deck verified which means it'll just work uh there's going to be playable which means you can play it but there might be some compatibility issues specifically in terms of controlling controlling it um then there's uh unplayable or like unsupported so this is like your vr games or your really complex games that can't that just won't work on the steam deck and then there's unknown <laughs> yeah so so their valve is gonna have their own uh uh like team that rates games so you have to if you are yeah. if you're a developer you have to submit it for a rating um or they're just gonna test literally everything that's on the the that's on steam um so 
what it so verified means that everything just straight up works and it's going to work great yeah playable uh, means there's weird things you have to do like you need to uh yeah. maybe you need uh the on-screen keyboard to, to write in up the player character or something like something yeah. so, something is going to be weird uh maybe there's a certain mode that doesn't work uh and unsupported means that there's a barrier that is preventing you from playing the game uh, yeah. Like, for example, VR stuff is just not going to be playable at all. It's going to have yeah. unplayable. And unknown means that they haven't verified it yet, that, that their own team hasn't done anything to, to check it out yet. So to become verified, you have to meet uh, the four following criteria. Input, games must have full controller support and the ability to access all content using the Steam Deck controls with no adjustments necessary. This includes the use of on-screen glyphs that match those on the Steam Deck buttons or those of an Xbox 360 uh, controller, which many Steam games already do this from compatibility with console versions or console controllers. Any in-game text must be done using only the... Any in-game text entry must be done only using the controller or the on-screen keyboard. Uh, display. Is the is the next point? Oh, on Games screen keyboard. Be- oh, but using the thumbstick to do it, not actually using a mouse or or, or typing right. with your fingers. The, okay, it's that makes more sense. For, so like, if like an RTS that relies on keyboard and mouse, right, might be labeled playable because you can't really play that with the controller. Well, I'm thinking uh, like I'm thinking like if you need to name your character, yeah, instead of using a keyboard, you have to be able to use the on screen keyboard with the controller like how you could how you would right. type in on a nintendo switch you would use the controller yeah. to type it in yeah uh any in-game text entry it must be done using only the controller yeah or go. the on-screen keyboard but when they say on-screen keyboard i think they mean the the steam decks keyboard which has the yeah. controller input well if the so like on the switch if you have to type something in you can either use the controller or you can use the touch screen correct that's, yes yes that yes. they're allowing yes. Yes. I think they're specifically meaning if you have to use the on-screen keyboard for gameplay. I I think it's that's, if you need to plug in a fucking keyboard to, to type in a word. Right. Like, that's not going to yeah. fly. And yes, of course, All it right. needs to be able to use a controller. But it is interesting that uh, they will, like, because there are, uh, like, I've seen games where uh, the controller prompts will come up and it'll be, uh, like, the wrong prompt, like, for a wrong system. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that they will allow Xbox uh, controller prompts because I guess it's the same. Well, yeah. Oops. So for the longest time, the 360 controller was the default PC controller. Right. For everything. So that makes sense. It does. Uh, um, also, uh, display. Games must include native support for 1280 by 800 or 1280 by 720 resolution and include a default con- configuration that runs at a playable frame rate on the hardware at the resolution at at that revolution. Uh, Valve has previously promised that really the entire Steam library can meet this threshold. Um, on-screen text should also be legible when the screen is held 12 inches from the face. Valve says that this means no letter should be less than nine pixels pixels in height. Pickles, though, pic- pickles nine pixels in height, uh, though a twelve pixel height is recommended. So the game has to be either eight hundred p or seven twenty p. However, according to Valve, all games should be able to reach that, and really they should because PC games are known to be scalable in terms of resolution. Right. Uh, it, it seamlessness. Also, the, All right. The, go ahead. There's also the great on deck set. I'm trying to plow through this. There's also a great yeah. on deck se- section in the the, the in in Steam, uh, and it'll be on the Steam Deck also. That has all yeah. of the verified stuff. Uh, so yeah. so if you're worried about what to buy, I hope that they have like a that. I hope that you can sort your own library by games that are great on deck because yeah, I don't they, want to buy. Said there's going to be a. Well, I know on Mac. You can sort your library by what's playable on Mac, so I'm oh. sure they'll add a great on deck you know, section as well. Mm. All right, real quick, I'll just say the last two points: seamlessness. Games shouldn't throw up any compatibility warnings when running on Steam Deck, and players must be able to navigate any third-party launchers with the controller and system support. The game must be compatible with the Steam OS natively or with the Proton compatibility layer that allows Windows games to run on the Linux-based system. This includes any middleware and or anti-cheat software used in the game. 
Uh, yeah, the anti cheat's going to be a problem. They they said for yeah. so, some games, anti cheat's going to run a little weird. Yeah. Um. So this is exciting. I'm glad. That, so they're making it very easy for us as users to figure out what's going to be good and what's not, which was a big concern of mine, yeah. honestly. Uh, yeah. It, it, obviously, they need to make it uh, uh, good for developers to be able to make games good for the Steam Deck. But uh, yeah. I never, I, I didn't even consider that they also need to make it easy for us to be able to tell what is not going to be compatible. Um, so this looks like it'll be a pretty decent experience. So I'm excited to get this thing in my grubby hands and and see see how it plays uh, Call of Duty Warzone, <laughs> which is not yeah. on Steam, I don't think. Um, really. Oh yeah. yeah, you probably have to get it from Battle.net or whatever. Yes, so I'm not. I'm not even sure if it'll be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, but whatever, we'll see. We'll see what uh, what Steam games I can get and and play. Um. Anyway. Anyway, that's looking better and better. What What else do we yeah. got? Oh, uh, Splinter Ubi Cell. Ubisoft has greenlit what will be the first mainline Splinter Cell game in a decade. That's according to a develop development sources who told us that the title has been put into production as a means of winning back fans frustrated by the recent efforts to revive the franchise in the mobile and VR spaces. It is not clear which studio is working on the project, although two people with knowledge of Ubisoft's plans suggest the new Splinter Cell was being led by a studio outside of its traditional Montreal base. The title is an early phase of production, the sources said, but there's a small chance it could be announced next year. The much-requested sequel will arrive at a time when the company is looking to rebuild its image following a wave of discrimination and sexual harassment allegations. Employee groups say that they are not satisfied with the level of action taken by Ubisoft to change its culture. So yeah, we might be getting Splinter Cell again. Thank you. Splinter, uh, the best... French bastards. The best Splinter Cell was Conviction, and nobody thinks that, and they're going to make a bad Splinter Cell. Blacklist was the best possible Splinter Cell game you can make. The problem with Blacklist was the story wasn't as good. It wasn't as focused as Conviction was, because it was a lot longer and a lot more open, and Michael Ironside didn't play Sam. That that literally ruined it for me. Yeah, it was it was so. I mean, he apparently he was sick at the time, so he couldn't reprise his role. But the guy that got to replace him was just the shit. Mm -hmm. He was just awful. Uh, Spawn Wave tweeted: Someone let Ubisoft know Splinter Cell doesn't need to be an open world game with eighteen thousand points on the map. That's my honestly my biggest fear because I've been saying that for a long time. I've I've been saying. That I think the reason why they haven't made a new Splinter Cell game is because they can't figure out a way to make it an open world sandbox with, you know, flag collecting and towers to climb. Yeah, I'm I've been burnt out on Ubisoft for a long time because all of their games are the same. They've yeah. been copying and pasting uh, games since fucking Assassin's Creed uh, uh, Four. So uh, yeah. It, it, like freaking Watch Dogs was just an Assassin's Creed game, and Watch then and then freaking the Division. Oh. Far Cry, uh, really a lot of it's from Far Cry, Far Cry 3. Mm. So, yeah, they just, they literally make this, Ghost Recon, Ghost Recon used to be, a, like, a much more ad advanced tactical version of Rainbow Six, and then they turned it into fucking uh, Far Cry with Breakpoint and Wildlands. And yeah, that, I would, that really annoys me. I was really disappointed because, uh, I wasn't I, I'm a big fan of Rainbow Six they released Rainbow Six Siege and I, when Rainbow Six Siege first came out it wasn't that good and uh, then they announced Ghost Recon and I was like here we are finally we're getting more Tom Clancy stuff and then I played it and I was like this is just The Division which was just Watch Dogs which was just uh, uh, Assassin's Creed so yeah, I, uh, I I have little faith in them I'm, I'm happy we're getting more Splinter yeah. Cell because I miss it but uh, I have little faith that they're going to do anything unique and cool with it yeah. Or even go um, back to the old stuff. I have little faith that they're yeah. going to do anything like that. Yeah, even like something like Chaos Theory, like the mm -hmm. original Xbox Splinter Cell games, like something like that. Just not an open world sandbox with flag collecting and towers to climb. Right. Last news. Uh, German game ban just screwed over Switch players on several other continents. What? So, how do I sum this up? Uh, Dying Light 
which is now coming out on the Switch. Dying Light was banned in Germany in 2015 due to the country's extremely draconian approach to bloody content in games. This has been long been an issue there in the 80s and 90s. To release a violent game in Germany, developers would have to take bizarre steps to replace uh, all red blood with green pixels. Hmm. Um, recently, those laws have been eased. Even games like Wolfenstein have been able to be released in Germany, where once any depiction of Nazis would torpedo any chance of being sold. But Dying Light's brutality was caught up before those changes, so the game was never allowed to be released there. Uh, and here we are today, uh, the release of Dying Light Platinum Edition on the Switch. Uh, that's gone without a... That's gone... So they, they released Dying Light Platinum Edition on the Switch without a hitch in North America and Asia, but with a surprise and very significantly a hiccup in Europe. A statement posted on Reddit by developers Techland explains, due to the nature of content... Due to the nature of the content, the digital version of the game is currently banned in Germany... Uh, where the European eShop is officially registered. This oh. makes it impossible to officially distribute the game in European countries and also Australia and New Zealand. We are currently working with our partner and local authorities to remove the ban so we can as soon as we can. So because the because Nintendo of Europe is registered in Germany, all their games uh, for, for all of Europe get filtered through Germany. So that's, if Germany bans the game, the rest of Europe doesn't get the game. That is that is uh, a major flaw in Nintendo's part to yeah. to have all of Europe go through the strictest country. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and now and I'm surprised that it this also affects Australia and New Zealand as well. Yeah, it doesn't make any that part doesn't make any yeah. sense. Um. Interesting. Uh, who here is excited for Dying Light on their Nintendo Switch, though? <laughs> um, I get this game confused with State of Decay all the time. Isn't it cloud? Isn't it cloud based? The second one is. Uh, the first one isn't. Di the first one isn't. No. Interesting. Okay. I think the first one's an older game. I think a 360 game. It's that old. Yeah. Oh my god! I know the second one's been in development forever. Yeah. 2015 is when it came out. Okay. Um, so I guess it isn't a... Wait, what? It says, it says release. The only release dates are for Mac OS and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> um, but it's on uh, PS4, Xbox One, uh, okay. Windows, and Linux. And apparently Mac. Anyway, uh, that's it. That's all for the news. Yeah. Uh, I want to do really quickly this. Quit of the week, quit of the week, quit of the week. So this isn't the tweet of the week. This is the quote that it's from. This is by some asshole who says, I was thinking about why so many in the radical left participate in, quote, speed running. The reason is the left's lack of work ethic. Go fast rather than do it right. And in a Petersonian sense to elevate alternative sexual archetypes in the marketplace. Quote, fastest Mario. And then uh, it's it says one out of 14. And there's a lot of, there's 14 God. tweets. Uh, I, I'm really hoping this is a troll because uh, it's a beautiful really copypasta. So. But I, I, I just like the last part. To elevate alternative sexual archetypes in the marketplace fastest mario yeah i'm trying to speed run mario so i can elevate my yeah. alternative sexual archetype this is the tweet of the week this is uh from turbo jet who made it a uh, sonic copy pasta hi i was thinking about why this so many beautiful. radical left participate in speed running uh-huh the reason is the left's lack of work ethic why go fast rather than do it right and in a Petersonian sense, Petersonian to elevate alternative sexual archetypes in the marketplace. Fastest hedgehog. Shadow, what the fuck are you talking about? You're a beta <laughs> male, Sonic. <laughs> I thought that was good. That That's was beautiful. That is so good. Did I ever show you Liquid Snake explaining <laughs> to Solid Snake Big Chungus? No. <laughs> 
I got to send that to you. No, and did somebody... you make it? I did not make it, but I wish I did because this guy does it just as good, if not better, than I could have. It's liquid. It's from the original Metal Gear Solid, and this liquid snake just. Have you ever heard of Big Chungus Snake? <laughs> and then it goes into the spiel explaining who Big Chungus is. Chat, if you could find it, link it in the chat. Um, I, I will do that right this second. Let's very quickly talk to the people from last week. If you are yes. watching on YouTube, you can just leave a comment. And if we like you, we'll get to you on next week's Wolf Den Live. If we don't get to you, Maybe it's something you said. Uh, Brenda from last week's Wolf Dead Live says, as somebody who works at a coffee shop, it's always refreshing to hear Bob talk about coffee. I love slash hate how I know exactly what you're saying all the time. Sometimes I wish I could give you tips on latte art, but I never know if I should. You should. I'm terrible at latte art. Anyway, always love these podcasts. Keep up the great work, Wolf Bros. Thank you, Brenda. Um, uh, did you see the trailer for the Batman where the Riddler does latte art? I did. Uh, that looked CG, or maybe it was just one of those robot arms. But it looked like it looked something was weird about it. Yeah, it might have been the, a robot arm, like the way it craned over. Anyway, so I, familiar yeah. with Big Chungus, Big Chungus, yes, Big Chungus, the world-renowned meme of an oversized cartoon rabbit. What does some dumb joke have to do with your plan? Everything, Snake. This isn't about jokes. This is about legacy. Do you even know who Big Chungus is? <laughs> He's just some cartoon rabbit. Not just some rabbit. The most famous rabbit in cinematic history. The one and only Bugs Bunny. Oh, now that <laughs> it does the stupid Bugs metal joke thing. The <laughs> Toons character? The very same. <laughs> In 1941, during the peak years of the Looney Tunes franchise, a cartoon was released named Wabbit Twubble, where Bugs Bunny faces off with his longtime rival, Elmer Fudd. But for just a moment, to mock the foolish Elmer, Bugs inflates himself to a comically bloated form, a moment that lasts only 3.4 seconds in an 8 minute and 22 second long cartoon. 3.4 seconds. That's all the time Big Chungus had ever existed. And yet decades later, he would become more famous than Bugs Bunny, despite being Bugs Bunny himself. <laughs> you see, Snake, memes control history, and I shall use the power of memes to control my own destiny. Do you honestly think Chuck Jones or Mel Blanc could have expected internet trolls to deify a character that doesn't even exist? Make him far more infamous than his own true identity as Bugs Bunny? Big Chungus lives on as the dominant meme. And that, brother, is what I intend to do. I will not let myself be cursed by my recessive memes. <laughs> so, two things. Uh, memes is like a thing in Metal Gear. Like, yeah. I well, don't memes, know. What's, what definition me of memes are they using? The original definition of memes, which is just basically an idea that gets repeated and like, you know, filtered through society. Mm -hmm. Memes, you know, that's why internet memes are called memes because they're basically a thing that gets, you know, repeated and filter out through the internet society. Mm -hmm. That's that's all a meme is. There's a Doctor Who episode where he says all a meme is is a repeating idea. And that's that's all a meme is. It's an idea that gets repeated and filtered out through the world. So the other thing I wanted to note was it's like a thing. If you've never played a Metal Gear game, it's a thing where they go on a long diatribe and then it like fades to black and then they continue the diatribe, but they have like a PowerPoint presentation like in front of it. So like that's <laughs> what he literally did that and he paused for the same yeah. amount of time that it would have paused. Uh, it was the, good. The, I've seen that done. That that and the steamed hams Metal Gear parody <laughs> do that, and they do it the best of any Metal Gear parody I've ever seen. Oh my god! Uh, anyway, uh, back you're to, all welcome. Back to last week's Wolf Den Live. Uh, Alejandro uh, Quinones. Alejandro says emulation is quote emulation is stealing. The fuck? I didn't. I didn't say that. 
I didn't say that. I might have said that, but I didn't mean that. <laughs> you, if you get, if you, if you acquire the ROM legally or you own it in some way, it's not stealing. Uh, the fuck emulation is just imitating the original hardware in order to run s special platform specific hardware. Emulation is completely legal. Where you get the ROMs is a whole different story. I'm pretty sure I didn't say emulation is is stealing. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I chose my words very carefully. Uh, even so, people with the physical game can just dump the ROM from their cartridges and have the game for emulation. So, here's the thing. When people talk about emulation, they generally mean one thing. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of agree on what that one thing is that we're talking about. So, <laughs> when people say emulation is stealing... They're referring to that. It's, it's, there's not a person on this earth that has emulated a game that hasn't downloaded a ROM. There's not a person on this earth that has dumped all of their ROMs personal, like the physically. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, if, if you have the capability of dumping a ROM yourself, you're probably someone of significance in you're someone who have actual significance in the game's preservation space mm -hmm. you're not you know jimmy fuckface who go who like goes on to the pirate bay to get all of his games from and supports emulation loudly on his twitch account while he farts into the <laughs> microphone <laughs> Silent Mongoose says, just say pirating ROMs is stealing. Simple. I'm pretty sure that that's what I said. I'm pretty sure I didn't say emulation is stealing. That's that's way too general. Um, and then Willow says, come get me, Yeehaw. <laughs> um somebody tweeted at me. Cause I, I I quote tweeted one of the the freaking uh, the analog thing, and I said this is gonna be hacked in two seconds. And somebody said, "So do you yeah. so do you support piracy or not? What is it?" And I was like, I was like, I was like, well, let's fucking hold the phone. And I tr I tried to like yeah. respond, but I was like, there's no good way to respond to this. Like, uh, listen, we all download ROMs, but it's still stealing. Yeah. I've I've run red lights before. I'm sorry, guys. It is still illegal to have done that. Yeah. Also, uh, I drink. I I am known to have a drink every once in a while. Does that mean I promote? That's what it was. The guy said, "So you promote piracy?" Yeah. It's like I've dr I've had a drink before. Does that mean I promote drink like alcohol? No. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, EPS5000 says there are a lot of great NES games I can name at least 10 really good ones right now that are not on Switch Online name them <laughs> why did you not name them I want to know <laughs> the 10 I can't think of 10 I can't think of 10 NES games period well I'll probably say a lot of sports games Um, I could not name 10 good NES games I mean I Good is subjective, especially when you go back that far. Ten is a lot. It's like, yeah. Especially. And remember, you said Metroid is not good, so that's the I, that's yeah. the bar. <laughs> well, I still think Super Mario Brothers is good. Mario Three is good. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd even say Two is good. Two I would is good. I would throw Two a bone and say that yeah, Two is good. Two is good. That's three right there. Um, Astro says most of the Mega Man games. One is not good. One is not. Two I and three, yes, but they're uh, very difficult. I've never played two. I've only played three, and it is very difficult. Um, very difficult. I've never played four, five, and six, but I imagine those are pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think. I've played the TMNT two and three. Those are good, but I don't know like if they're top ten good. Uh. Castlevania is very difficult. And I don't know if like that would hold up right now. Ninja uh, Gaiden is also good, but very difficult. Yes. Uh, Crispy X, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Super Mario Brothers 3, DuckTales, DuckTales 2, Tecmo Super Bowl, The Legend of Zelda. Uh, 
Grill House says Tiny Toons Adventures, obviously. I would say that Techno Bowl is not good. People like well, that. No. This game sucks. <laughs> Dude, Techno Bowl, like, people still mod that to this day, like, with the current NFL rosters and stuff. Like, there's so? a thriving Techno Bowl community. Would, it, would they still be doing that if the game wasn't good on some level? People eat their own shit, Will. I don't know if you know that. But just because people do it doesn't mean it's good or fun. What you're saying is you promote eating shit. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I say eat your own shit instead of play Tech Bowl, everybody. Uh, we named more than 10. Uh, yeah. So congratulations, DP, as you win. You win. Yeah. But I still wish you would have named your 10 so we could make fun of it. <laughs> uh, long Pants Man. Says, whenever I get the veggie sub from Wawa, I swear it always comes with sand in it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have to give it a go. One time, the only time I ever got a veggie sub was from Subway one time for some reason, and I had the worst farts. Um, that sounds like a bad time. Andrew Vogel says, should I play any of the earlier Metroid games prior to this one? We answered that already. And we answered that yeah. during that podcast. No, we just play this it. like every time somebody brings up Metroid Dread. Just play Metroid Dread. It is a great experience. You don't Metroid need Dread. any yeah. prior context other than. No. Uh, no, you don't need any prior context other than no. what a Metroidvania style game is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you want to know that. If you want, when you're done, go back and play some of the older ones because the uh, Starting with Super Metroid onward, they hold up very well. Um, but that's, yeah, you don't ha need to, any prior knowledge going again. T Dog Gaming with 400 bits. Thank you very much. We got Pork Chop here. It says, Hey, Will, did you see the new Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer? I'm hyped about it. I like with their what they're doing uh, with Egon's family and past. Seen reviews for it and are pretty good as well, but I have to wait to see it myself. I don't know what the deal with that movie is. Like, like Ghostbusters is a comedy that happens to be kind of scary. This looks like it forgot to be a comedy. It just looks mm -hmm. like it's trying to be like some weird nostalgia trip. And I don't I don't think anybody really knows what Ghostbusters is anymore. I think we all think Ghostbusters is the cartoon when in reality it's not the cartoon it's it's something else that they've been trying to replicate for years and just haven't really gotten gotten close to it i saw arguments i think we talked about this i saw arguments online people saying that it was never a comedy it was just it was just a a, a movie that happened to have funny things in it or something when you when it's it's directed by a comedic director it stars uh two saturday night live alumni um, it stars the f best friend of all those guys. I think Harold Ramis wrote Animal House, which is the greatest comedy of all time, according to our father. Mm -hmm. So what? It, who doesn't think that that was going to be a comedy? I don't know. Who? I don't know. I don't want to say Greg Miller because I don't remember his stance on it, but it was definitely a tweet where I I found the thread from. Uh, but uh yeah, I mean, I, I I think people expect comedies to uh to have uh the situation be part of the comedy. Like the situation is funny. Yeah. Like that, that they get into some hijinks. But in this, the situation isn't funny. But all of the people are funny. All the yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got it. This was released back at a t in the time when like you could do things like that, mm -hmm. where like comedies could be like weird stuff like this. But nowadays, comedies. Are, I don't want to say comedies are all the same, but they they follow a similar mindset. They're like the Will Ferrell style comedies or the they're the Judd Apatow style comedies and stuff. And those are all fine. Those are good. Some of my favorite movies are like that. But Ghostbusters is unique in that it's Ghostbusters. There's nothing mm -hmm. else really like it. It's funny, but it's also scary. It's also you know kind of suspenseful. It's got action in it, but. You know, it's it's at its core, it's still a comedy. It's just not a comedy like what we think of as a modern comedy is. 
I think this is important to note here. Kate McCat says, if if it's from Wawa, it's not a sub, it's a hoagie, you heathens. That's a regional thing. We should know this. In the Northeast, they call it a grinder. Thoughts? <laughs> that is an app that I yes. once accidentally downloaded. No, why would you do that? What you would need no, what would you think no, that it, it is? It wasn't no, it wasn't grinder. It was Hornet, which is like Grinder for uh, and Bumble mixed together. Wait, how could you wait? That makes no sense. What the what? whole purpose of Bumble is so that the girl has to make the the first move. If you're <laughs> yes. the same sex, what? Who makes the first move? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't go any further in after i downloaded the app by accident <laughs> what did you think that it was no i knew what it was i was searching for it and i found it like oh that's it and then my finger swear to god landed on download will was trying will got a hornet's nest outside he was trying to identify the hornets so he downloaded yeah. an app that he thought was identifying exactly hornets but it turned out to be a, a dating app yeah that's a very sus story, Will, I have to say. <laughs> Why the hell were you looking at the app in the first place? Who who hasn't who hasn't like been with their friends and been like, you know there's a gay bumble? There's a gay bumble? I gotta I, look this up. I, I have to be honest, I am very confused about the whole gay bumble thing. I need to know how you can make bumble a gay thing. It doesn't make any sense to me. I I don't know. Why don't you download Hornet and <laughs> <laughs> Um. Anyway, uh, uh what, what what else did do you heathens? Anyway, no, uh, it it's it, the sandwich is called a sub because Subway is a store that exists. Well, no, that's not a good argument because it's from Wawa. Yeah, I will never call it a grinder. That's weird. That doesn't make any sense. That's a that's a thing I put my coffee in. And also an app if I'm feeling sassy that night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, between the dildo ads on Bob's screen and Will using Grinder, I don't know. I, I, I don't know they were so... F I didn't know they were so free. Yo, bro, did you listen to us? He used Hornet. Dude, it's 2021, man. Yeah, you don't know our lives. Yeah. Um. So apparently, people want us to answer. Uh, how do we feel about Celeste coming off of Game Pass? Who cares? Coming off? I thought they were adding it to Game Pass. Leaving Game Apex fans is leaving Game Pass. Buy the fucking game. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, have you not beaten it? Is that why you're upset that it's leaving Game Pass? I mean. Games are going to leave Game Pass. And yeah. I have I haven't touched Celeste in years. It's an amazing game, but I haven't touched it in in, in years. You so. get a discount if a game leaves Game Pass. Oh, it's leaving Game Pass. Okay. If a game leaves Game Pass, you can still buy it at a from what I understand a pretty good discount. So, check check what the discount is and then download it. Apex fan says other games are leaving too like like Five Nights at Freddy's. I could not care less about FNAF. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so Squid Vorbis gave us a link. How does Bumble work for gay people? Since the girl usually meet has to message first. Uh, you can select what your sexual preference is in the app. Uh, Bumble will then show you people that you can like. Normally, only the girl can message first. But in the case of same-sex couples, either person can message first. So then that... How Tinder. Do, yeah. How do you make a... a <laughs> that's the like i understand i completely understand how bumble works for same-sex people i don't understand how you can call an app grinder and uh, and no no i'm sorry bumble for gay people because bumble <laughs> the whole the whole hook of bumble is that the girl messages first right so you can't call it bumble for gay people that doesn't work Well, I don't make the rules. I just accidentally download the apps. Bumble has friendship too. 
Is it? But doesn't Tinder have that? I don't know. I I don't I, I I'm the wrong person to talk to about dating apps. <laughs> Uh, I'm so happy I missed that entire wave. <laughs> uh, I was in the middle of it, and I just, I just, uh, I just abstained. I was like, I was like, you know what? I guess it's just not gonna happen then. <laughs> I, was, I, I, yeah. I quit. I quit the. I rage quit the game. I was like, no, I'm not playing. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you made the right decision, <laughs> guys. It's very late. We need to leave. Thank you for hanging. Yeah. Up. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Them Podcast and your preferred podcast services of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Chris BX said, he's the one who makes the uh, the timestamps. He said, adding another topic, dating sites and timestamping it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for hanging out, everybody. Uh, maybe we'll do a poll on Spotify. So go over to Spotify yeah, and see if there's a poll out. over there. We'll see what happens. It won't uh, be about dating apps. Sorry, but I'll think of something good. Uh, is Nintendo Switch Online too expensive or something like that? Yeah. Uh, who's online right now? Let's see. We have uh, nobody I care about. Womp, womp, womp. Uh, we raided Jiggy recently. Um, oh, Wood's on. Everybody go watch Wood. There you go. He's he's playing Sora. I think he's got an open arena, so go kick his ass. Uh, <laughs> some of you open chat gang people will fucking clean house over there. Uh, I will see you probably Thursday. Uh, I don't think so tomorrow, unless there's like a cheeky little little stream. But I'll see you on Thursday, guys. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye. You talking about Venusaur or Bob? Because Bob just raided.